just him not being able to actually speak a language. He just he's, he just clicks. He's just... Well, they actually have like weird telepathy. Yeah, yeah, I know they got antenna antenna mind, but I feel like if he actually tried to speak, it would just be clicks. Okay. To not weird people. Even though the clicks are simultaneously more scary than actual telepathy. Also, I'm doing a one-shot with some people, and um, they said like two rare items and two uncommon items, and I'm like, okay. Um, I rolled. He said you had to roll stats, so I rolled stats, and I rolled absolute garbage. I had a four. Ooh, that's yeah. That's just Luckily, get it. That's just good enough to be a functional human in D and D. <laughs> Luckily, though, they have two rare items and two, um, two uncommon items. So I took pair, a headband of intellect, um, amulet of uh, health, and uh, the gloves of like ogre strength or whatever. So I have a 19 con, 19 <laughs> intelligence, and 21 strength on top of the four and my two eights. <laughs> what was your best? What was your best not like modified stat from items and shit? <laughs> okay, so the stats started eight, ten, ten, fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. Okay, so you had three fourteens. Ah, no, that was a different roll. It was four, um, eight, ten, and then there was three fourteens. So with the items, the character has actually good stats, but. <laughs> I haven't used magic items to just not have garbage stats. What class is he? I don't know yet. I was just messing around with stats. I've actually done like the concessions coming up soon, so I haven't finished making the character. Ah, well, do you know what race? <laughs> um, one of their homebrew races. They want to want someone to test out, so I'm testing it out. Pretty much, ah. they're a crystal person, and they don't really have many mechanical things except for their melee attacks deal elemental damage uh, that you choose. And their size, you can be small, medium, or even large, and it like augments the melee attack. Hmm. Plus two wisdom, plus one of another stat. So I was gonna go cleric of of um, tempest cleric, Ooh. and choose lightning, so that when I punch people, they get knocked ten feet away. Oh wait, is that a flu icy? You're a taser now. It is a flu icy. <laughs> yeah, taser punches. Okay. I know, but you could easily turn to the dark side with that and use the uh, knockback to knock them 10 feet up I instead mean... of 10 feet away, and then they'll take fall damage on the way down. Uh, the DM okay. don't allow that. Okay. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, Aloha. I'm sorry. Oh, we were, uh, I was playing a game with Rowan. Uh, uh, I no have way. to go to the bathroom. I will be back in a few minutes. No worries. I'll probably just do a recap and then... Hopefully you and Panda can be in game by then. <laughs> Stares at Panda. <laughs> I'm making coffee. I am out of bed. Like, Good Panda. There's progress made. <laughs> okay. Last time on Blood and Deceit. Having finished your business with the hags and fixing the nightmare problem in town... You all woke up, well, most of you woke up the next morning, morning, uh, well-rested. Uh, Darling took it upon herself to grab everyone, everyone's mundane uh, weaponry and bring it to the blacksmith to upgrade to plus one. A lot, as well as also get herself a warhammer to hopefully, hopefully do to replace her flail that she she had been using. <laughs> Along, some potions were also bought by other members. Uh, some were just confused as to what they were doing next. As the party was discussing what to do next, possibly taking care of this cactus problem that they had heard about, they... <laughs> cactus problem they had heard about, they heard screams off in the distance. <laughs> Upon coming out, they saw various they saw various cactus cactus people just pretty much causing a ruckus in town. Val, who was 
Bao, who had just woken up, uh, bedhead and all, incredibly groggy, <laughs> and Yorb, who was still asleep until mid until midway into the fight when he woke up and joined the fray. Also joining the fray as as the party was dealing with the cactus people in town was Sir Blorpington, a were shark person who who decided. Fuck it, I'm coming in and fighting these things because he was bored and wanted to fight. <laughs> after that, the after that, uh Whiskers with his with his bear new bear form decided to test out its sniffer. Traveling all the way to a canyon filled with cacti. Upon exploring the cacti the cactus canyon canyon, they ran into even more well, they were jumped, basically, by more cactus people. Having cleared them out, with Val using up even more of her spell slots, the party then traveled, then traveled down a path, which led to an opening. In this opening, there was a larger cacti, cactus that the party approached. Upon approaching, the cactus came alive and reanimated some of the smaller cactuses around him. It was it was a it was an interesting battle, uh, filled <laughs> where Whiskers, realizing that most of his animal forms cannot see in the dark, except for one, had to rely on the stats of a giant spider in order to fight off these creatures. <laughs> Eventually the party managed to deal with the threat and decided that this was now a good time to take a little bit of a breather. As they took the breather, they discovered that in the area where the giant cactus was, there was a pauldron, basically made out of cactuses, which the which Akari decided to don upon himself. <laughs> With this new item in tow and the party slightly rested, we continue our game now back in the cactus canyon. So, party, what do you do as you, as your short, does the party do anything during their short rests, other than what I've already described, or? Not that I think of, Gorb just is chilling, he's resting his old man back. Whiskers ponders why wolves don't have dark vision. <laughs> the DM also ponders why wolves don't have dark vision. <laughs> Um, Whiskers will point out the general way to get deeper into the cave as he found it while he was a spider. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else that the party wants to do while in this area, I can just move you over into the next map. Oh, Whiskers will mention mm -hmm. that, um, that cactus wasn't just making weird noises, it was actually speaking a language. Um, and it was talking about some mother. Alright, I'm back. Oh. <laughs> so apparently, uh, cactuses have mommy issues. Akari, you just hear Whiskers say this out loud to everyone. Yeah, Wait, what? The cactuses uh, have mommy issues. The cactuses have what? Mommy, mommy issues. issues. Mommy issues. Did I stutter? Oh. <laughs> stutter? They were talking about protecting some. What was it again? Mother thing. Uh, you, the words specifically that you heard in Druidic were "protect the old mother." Yeah, the old mother. Um. Also, DM, uh, would the shark man heal his poison and some HP during a short rest? Uh oh, yes, he would definitely. He would definitely heal some of his some of his hit points from. <laughs> He's high on cactus juice. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I give him some water out of my supply so that he doesn't like. I'll give him an archon. <laughs> I'll give him an archon save to see if he can break out of this drunken stupor. How long that is this poison can last. That, this is a short rest of an hour. He's been Great eating enough. cactus people. Pure. <laughs> he. He's been biting off the heads of cactus people. He's getting a lot of juice in his system. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's getting all quenchy. Uh, <laughs> the quenchiest. Oh, he only had to use one of his head dice. <laughs> but he also has all his key points back. All his key points that he did not really use. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make. Well, I'm gonna make him make a con save to see if he is no longer poisoned. He is oh. still. Po he is still very much drunk. <laughs> GC. Yes. Did you get my message by the way? That you uh, wanted. Oh yes, I yes I got that. <laughs> no worries. DM plots evilly. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing a short rest. Um, I can do my cantrip then for light. Uh, yes. Rock and I'll try to put light on the rock, and then like we'll have some light in here. Oh, uh, looking at the party. Were, were you also allowing me to change my uh, change my uh? Yes, I. Spell? I had hoped you would have done that before game, but. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried to do that last after last session, but you, you, I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, Panda, what does... Uh, what are the specific di dimensions for lights? Is it 2020 or...? Uh, oh, you touch one object that is no larger than 10 feet in dimension. Until the spell ends, the object sheds a bright light in a 20-foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. Yeah. Okay. And it lasts for an hour, and it's a cantrip at will, so I can just poke the rock and up. reset it when I want. Okay. Um, uh. You also do it on any of your weapons or clothing or anything you particularly you carry around to make it easier for travel. Yeah, I could just apply it to myself, but like, then we can't throw the rock at someone. Fair enough. Well, Looks at the party. And hurt them, you know. This party that is filled with a bunch of people who can see in the dark, but, <laughs> but Look, only one. I appreciate it for when I turn to a bear, and you're just gonna see the bear pick up the rock and like hold it in his teeth as it claws people to death. I can okay. apply it to your nose if you'd like and make it red. Uh, unfortunately, you can't. It only works on items. So my body parts aren't considered a item or object. They are if you cut them um, off. That is actually true, sadly. <laughs> a corpse is considered an object. Mechanically. So we could carry around a glowing corpse. <laughs> <laughs> also, the mending spell works on corpses, so if you, if you cut off your arm, uh, die, and then use mending to put it back on, then you can revive them with the arm back on. We are learning a lot today about certain spell mechanics. <laughs> Did you know you could kill somebody with just, uh, make water? I know you can't, it's not technically attack. But in the description, is it's not anywhere you could see. It's anywhere you want, in, anywhere you want in a certain radius. Okay. Oh, and Mage Hand. I've learned how to kill people with Mage Hand. Oh, most of those <laughs> videos you see, the little shorts are false. Yeah. Like they don't actually they're like they're like funny. I, they're like funny <laughs> yeah. little skits and shit. I'm like, they also create water. Technically, to a container. Yeah, like technically, it is possible. It's just the GM has to allow it. <laughs> well, mechanically, the rules actually generically say you can't do it. Okay, this. But with, that, with that all aside, the DM was moving us to the next map. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if there's something else that. Uh, you cast light on a rock, you all heal whatever minor injuries you sustain throughout these battles, and we move you to the next map of this canyon. Walking in deeper, you're greeted by the sight of even more cactuses around you as you walk forward. Um, in Druidic, uh, what's just gonna say, hello cactus people? The cactuses... The cactuses do not reply back to you. At least they're not the smart cactus. <laughs> I love nothing but a black square. You should be able to see. What? I can see. I can't. I don't think my token's in place yet. It is. 
What? I can't see! What the hell? You have vision! I gave you vision! What is your problem? <laughs> I, I, I can't... What? It's just... There it is. There it is. There we go. God. Also, this, I don't this... think the map was fully loaded or something. I don't know. Cactus Johnson. Cactus. <sighs> Small cracks and doorways. Yo, if you take, uh, let's see. <laughs> what? Yo, if you take, uh, 60 points of psychic damage for making an inappropriate joke like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. You don't. <laughs> I don't even know what he said, and I just. <laughs> I heard Cactus Johnson, I don't want to acknowledge it, let's keep going. <laughs> yes, let's just let's just continue. <laughs> that's a great. That's a that's the strongest shape. Winter just sort of walks ahead, I'd like talking to the various cactuses as he walks by, going, "Can you understand druidic?" Yeah, none of the. As you keep walking by, none of them seem to understand druidic. Also, as you walk by, you notice a giant boulder in the middle of the middle of the canyon. Right here. It seems to be plugging up this specific part of the canyon. <laughs> that! Akari, you cannot... <laughs> what? I'm not moving my character? What the hell? I moved your character back because you moved into a place you shouldn't have been able to move. <laughs> oh, right here? What? I moved right here. That's not a place that I can't be. You were on top of the rock on my screen. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was not on top of the rock. I was next to uh, the shark. Huh, weird. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> um, does the rock, like, cover the entirety of the entryway, or is it high enough that it is small enough that this thing can go over it, theoretically? I mean, with, you could attempt to climb over it, yes. No, you also notice a path the down this way. Can you fly over it? <laughs> looks, over, looks over to Val. <laughs> Val is just in a stupor. And once again, Akari is trying to break the laws of physics and do what he cannot. <laughs> what did we say last session? Val woke Why up with that right there? <laughs> that has not gone away. Well, yeah, but um, I, I asked Val if she could fly over this rock and look to see what's on the other side. If she can or not, I can't. Uh, I'll fly over. Uh, I will remind you, Val, your your wings only work for a minute. <laughs> because Asimar are screwed over like that for some reason. <laughs> it's a minute per uh, per usage, and it's up to proficiency modifier about time, I think. Uh. Um. Or no, I'm thinking of the... No, uh, no. Like, no, you're thinking of the damage that goes on top of it. Yeah. I was thinking of a different feature altogether. I was thinking of Twilight like Cleric. So, Val, you could potentially fly over this. Just know you'd only be able to fly for a minute before your wings no longer work. <laughs> I, just, I just see the plane flying up and just plummeting to the ground. <laughs> okay, I fly up for 30 seconds, see if I can find a way over... And then I got, glide back down. Uh, uh, as you fly over, uh, this is what you'd see. She's gone. You would just see more cactuses okay. and a path, and you look to the south, and you see what you can assume to be a path that also leads up here from the, the other side south. Okay. And I assume you fly back? Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we need to find the boulder, or can we go around? Your... I mean, it's just another area with more cactuses. Do we want to try okay. going down and see if there's a way around? Because I don't think we've done that yet. Sure. So mm. Gior's going to roll his history check on the stone, isn't he? Uh, no, it's actually something different this time. <gasps> In the dwarf mine it. Yeah. Can the dwarf find through it? Is he trying to diggy diggy a hole? 
quite possible. Unfortunately, I don't think his weapon's a great pick. It's a mall. Shit, it's that is a hammer, hammer hole. Well, uh, he I... to be a, be a great weapon master, but you. Yeah. I mean, regardless, as you slam against his rock, it's a sturdy rock. <laughs> yeah. It's made of Minecraft obsidian. What if I hit it harder? <laughs> If your <laughs> if your ball wasn't magical, it would definitely be broken by now. <laughs> um, Wizards is gonna start heading down this direction. Okay, board for ten. Board for ten and just a drunken stupor. We'll just keep following. <laughs> Why can't I move my character? Dude, you don't handle your alcohol very well. Or your coke, your cactus juice. What? I drank a lot of... I drank a lot of these things. Okay, next time just use it like mouthwash and spit it out. But it's so tasty. <laughs> That's why I said you're an alcoholic. Uh -huh. Does he have like a ton of cactus needles in it on his like, teeth or gums? Uh uh, he has a few. <laughs> oh my god, it's just a passage that leads around. <laughs> Do you speak for Riddick? Val is just, uh, stuck by the boulder. Um. Uh, Does it seem to lead anywhere, or is it that, uh... Uh, as you look down that way, there doesn't seem to be anything in that corner. Okay. Uh, hold, I'm going to need you all to stop. Time time. I'm going to do it. I'm stepping right here because there's cactuses right here. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to stop because you have walked into, uh, into an ambush, I'm afraid. <laughs> as needles from some of the cacti just shoot out at some of you. Uh, let's see. This is at advantage towards Val. A 20, I'm assuming a 20 hits you, Val. Yeah, a 20 hits me. Uh, you take 5 points of piercing damage. Okay. Another one's going to shoot at you, Val. Uh, two points of piercing damage. What do cactuses have against bird people? Okay. And then two more two more are going to be shot at... Yeah, three more are going to be shot at Blorpington. One They're is North. North. They're racist against the animal people. How dare these cactuses? Two are going to be at advantage, one is going to be at normal because he's kind of out of range. Okay. Okay, well. Hmm. Oh, he, uh, he obviously just missiles the crit, right? Hold on, as I roll damage, as I roll the damage. Three. Four. Yeah, he'll deflect missiles to Chris, making that no as he as he feels the first two impact him, he turns around in time and catches the needles of the of the last one that would have done a bit more damage. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna need you all to roll initiative. <laughs> Yay! Yo average gear moment. Okay. The right. short leg. Hey, the good news is there's cactuses close enough for you to hit in one turn's movement. I know. Uh, As you see, these things is appear around you. The bad news is a car we, since, it's a, since the ambush, don't we get lose a turn? That was mm -hmm. our lose a turn. Yeah. We all touch us. Can you fix my initiative? I rolled an 18, but I did not have my thing clicked. Yeah, I'll, f I'll fix that. Yeah. I shall be kind. Cruel yeah. to be kind. Yeah. Usually kind, so like... 
<laughs> you're really gonna do this now, Panda? <laughs> He said, she said you're yeah, a that That's normal. Shush. <laughs> you know what I'm suddenly realizing? Is this the team player music? Hmm? It's probably some non DMC music. She doesn't care what it is. I mean, I try to find. Absolutely. I've tried to find not copyrighted music. Yeah, I, well, it'd be really funny. Just one of the one of the sessions, the sneaky salamanders. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay, we start off initiative with Val. Val, you have been shot by needles. What do you do? She's in a stunned silence. <laughs> I thought I was muted. Uh, guiding bolt towards one of them that hit me. Uh, okay, it can be either of the two that are around you right now. Go with... I want to see the one in front of me, but that's not going to help you at all. Uh, if we get the thing to, like... Do the click thing it usually does? This one. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I can see where you. I can see your marker. <laughs> okay, so that one. Okay, make your shot. Ow. Six. That's not what I meant to do. I shall ignore okay. whatever the heck Akari yeah, is doing. Ignore that. Uh. I try, but it fizzles out. And, uh, you shoot, and he ducks out of the way. <laughs> okay. Okay, oh, well... Yeah. Alright, anything else in your turn, Val? Nope. Okay. Whiskers, what's your dexterity? Uh, plus like three. Okay, you would go before the cactuses do. Um, not wanting to turn into an animal in the current situation, I will instead, let's see, yeah, I'm going to cast Shillelagh. Shillelagh is a bonus action. Well, now I hit with my, um, Kurt, my wisdom instead of my other stuff. Um... And then I'm just going to brandish my quarterstaff. Uh, let me check this down real quick. There we go. And I will... Let's see what's closest enemy. I don't want to really smack. Uh, yeah, I'll smack this one. Okay. Make a smack. A ten misses. I secretly get advantage for reasons. I mean, you are a barbarian. I, <laughs> no, I can't do it with a charisma, da a wisdom damaging weapon, though. Ah, uh, never Actually, mind. I, think I could pack recklessly with it. I'm not sure about the definition. I think it says strength weapon, though. Okay, uh, that was your bones action. Action. Anything else? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. It's now the awakened cacti's turn. Uh, this one's going to punch. It's going to punch you, Whiskers. It's I'm assuming a 21. Does a 21 hit you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You take three slashing damage as it wails you with its stump. Ow. This one's going to run up, as well as this one. Uh, they, they see that they that shooting the sh that shooting the shark will potentially lead to nothing, so they're going to start shooting at at the dwarf. Not the dwarf. Let's see, your three attacks are coming at your at you. Fifteen. 
10. Mm. Mm. <laughs> they just got progressively worse. They all miss you. Also, your volume, like, have, like, they were, they were aiming for headshots when they aimed too high. That's how you... uh, this one's gonna run up and punch you, Val. Okay. Does a six? Does a sixteen hit you? No. Okay, this one tries to punch you and bounces harmlessly off your armor. Akari, it is your turn. I move up to this one and <clears throat> attack with my short sword. Okay. Your new sharpened short sword. Okay. That hits. Alright, nine plus five. He is at death's door. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn off my sneak and as a Bonus action, I'm going to also attack with my dagger for half damage. Uh, that hits. Uh, and that is just enough to kill as you stab into this creature, getting a bit of cactus juice on yourself, but you kill it. Yay. Alright, I have my turn. Okay. Uh, Gjorv, it is your turn. Alright. I make my way over to this one, right? Right, yep, yep, right here. And then... I give him the old... What do you do, Wackaboo? That hits. Give him the that was crit. It's my... Indeed a molly wop. It's my kill. It, roll damage. Uh, you instantly crush this thing to death. Oh, wait, wait. He is, resistant to, he is resistant to bludgeoning damage, so that would only be 11 points of damage. He's still up. Hmm. It was a crit, so I do have access to my bonus action attack. So. Yes, you do. Ooh, also, did something happen to your mic? You sound a bit more muffled. Yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> uh, just really good now. I don't know. I don't, I've, I've never had a mic to begin with, I've always been talking to my phone. Hmm. Strange, you've, you've been sounding clear earlier, I wonder. Regardless, uh, rest of your turn. Thank you. The good get or where's the is it food okay. Uh that hits. Dropping your maul and taking out your great axe, you cut this one down, killing it. And using another remainder of my movement. Uh, that, yeah, that misses. <laughs> you miss horribly with that one. Uh, that was your action. That was your action, bonus action. Uh, at the end of your turn, your uh, Blarpington is going to realize, all right, we're in a fight, <laughs> and run up and try and assist you. <laughs> oh, you didn't put up an initial dragon. <laughs> He was distracted by that cactus juice. <laughs> he's gonna start taking some chomps at disadvantage because he's poisoned. <laughs> Missing. <laughs> I don't know why everything is going insane as so. Okay, okay. Uh, only that last one hits. <laughs> As he bites into this one, dealing a 10 piercing damage. This one you see is greatly injured by this. <laughs> okay, uh, darling, it is now your turn. Uh, 
Haha, <laughs> yes. Darling's going to come up here to this cat guy. Well, actually, never mind. She's going to come up here. Right there. Right there looks good. Okay. Form of dread. Followed by the wise old uh, warlocky thingies. Here come the Elder's Blast. That hits. Does that one hit? Eventually start a blast. Yeah, that hits. Uh, uh, assuming no radiant on that, just full. Uh, he's still up after that first hit. Someone's I getting shot in run. the background. <laughs> Uh, a wisdom save. She's all spooky. Oh, that was Blarfington, my bad. <laughs> no, no, no. You I need... was say that cactus was very wise. No, no, no. This cactus is actually very not wise. He is afraid of you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So, guess what, DM? Add another one. Here we go. Oh, that hits. Dealing. And it's dead. <laughs> nice. Nice. See, yeah, I was right there. One, two, three, mm. four, five, six. Uh, she gives scratches to whiskers. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh. And looks very scary. <laughs> Hey, she's used to it. She's scarier when she has a stern face in normal form. <laughs> and I have plus one. Okay. Oh, Val, it is now your turn. The cactus that was attacking you has been slaughtered by Akari. What do you do? You're muted again. We can see you aiming. <laughs> we can't see you talking. Unless that was all like talking. Ah. Oh, uh, Val. Panda. You there? <laughs> also, I think they were both mute. No, Panda switched to Darling. Now Panda's unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. It's your turn, Val. What do you do? in our spell slot? Possibly. <laughs> no, Spells are useful. Like the cactus is on fire! Uh, I have... Thaumaturgy, so I can cause flames to flicker, brighten, dim, or change color, but I have to have fire. Um, oh, I assumed you had an offensive catch like take a flame or something. Mm, I don't have a cantrip for fire. Um, I have Light, Spare the Dying, and Thaumaturgy. Ah. Okay. <laughs> that would explain it. Um, uh, hold on, I can do magical effects. Okay, that's not going to be useful. Um... I honestly don't know what I can do. I'm a can't throw the dagger if it's someone in the way because I chose poorly when I moved. Uh, so I mean, Yorb is short. Gonna... Well, here's the thing: Yorb is shorter than you, so you can throw it. <laughs> also, I don't do that rule where if someone's in your way, you and you throw a weapon and won't hit them, unless you roll really badly. <laughs> you just get my haircut as you hit the cactus. Hopefully. I'm gonna throw my dagger. 
Okay. Sorry, your dagger. Make a dagger attack. That hits. Cool. That was twenty. Yeah. I'm assuming that's this one. Yes. Okay, that is four piercing damage. As Yorv, you see overhead, overhead of you, a dagger fly and hit this one. Hit this one. There is now a dagger embedded, a dagger embedded into this one. Imagine there's like the the split in his hair. Oh, just so you know, DM, uh, you deleted the cactus that had initiative, so it, it was right after me. But I'm just oh, I, I remember. I saw I saw that. And I was just like. Mm. <laughs> Uh, anything else in your turn, Val? Nope. Okay, Whiskers, it's now your turn. Okay, um, wondering if they taste as good as he says they do. Uh, he's gonna walk over and take a bite out of the scotches. Okay. Yeah. I cast Primal Savagery. You savage. That hits. 18 acid damage. Uh, let me look at there. This is a new damage type. Uh, huh. uh, it fully goes through, and this one melts. And uh, yeah, my turn. Hmm. It's now the cactus's turn. The cactus is. The cat, the one cactus. <laughs> hmm. And eh, he's too dumb. Yeah, we he, literally. He's mindless. He's, uh, allies. <laughs> he's going to take an attack of opportunity from Lorpington. Hopefully, not d dying from this. <laughs> die, 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 die. What do they have against bird people? <laughs> uh, Lorpington, despite that disadvantage, still hits. They're Good. obviously jealous of my wings and the fact I can fly and they can't. So they yes, you can fly for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna run up to you and with the last raw, hit you, I assume. If a 18 hits you. Mm-hmm. It hits. Okay, you take three slashing damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, Akari, it's your turn. Once again, Val is being assaulted by a cactus person. <laughs> and Akari started blasting. Akari silently just runs up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move there and I'm gonna cast Shadow Bite. There we go. Okay. Uh, none of that says Shadow Blade. <laughs> it says Shadow Smite. Oh, that's, 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 that's the wrong one. What the hell? Shadow Bite. I have that spell too. Why is it saying Bloody Smite? Smite? Are you <laughs> clicking the... Are you... Yes. Get... <laughs> it's a 1d6. Hold on, I have to roll separately. That's okay. 1d6. Is it an attack roll? Yeah. So, 1d6 for... Freaking hell, dude. Okay, it's not working. 1d20 for the attack. It misses. Okay. Well, it's 1d20 plus your... Plus your uh, spellcasting modifier. It's not gonna be plus... It's a cantrip. What is I... this? Modifier, hold on. I mean, <laughs> I feel like you need a twelve. You need a twelve in order to hit it. Oh yeah, he needs a plus nine. I don't think that's happening. Yeah. It... The target must make a successful Constitution saving throw. Oh, this isn't even an attack roll. It's a save, or is it a yeah. save on top of an attack? Here, roll? I'll do that right there. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, ah. so no, he just takes two d six damage. Yes, uh, yes, uh, con saving throw. He passes. Good passes. 
It misses. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. I have no turn. Okay. Washington's going to get a bit more drunker. <laughs> no, don't drink it. I, I ate it, but I also melted it in my mouth, so oh, it tastes better than when you eat it. Oh, technically that's at disadvantage, so another roll. That one misses. And another one. That one hits. I'm pretty certain his minimum will kill it, but just to make sure. Yep. <laughs> he bites this one's head off and just eats it like he has been this whole time. Ending the initiative. <laughs> Where friends go? Um, are there any cactuses that didn't turn into cactus people? Uh, there were a cu uh, in this area. Uh, this one didn't. Okay. Um, he tries to examine it to see if there's any difference between the other cactuses and it. Uh, make an investigation check. <laughs> uh, yeah. You... it's a cactus. <laughs> I rolled intimidation. <laughs> the cactus cannot be scared of you, for it is a plant. Yeah, I just clicked the wrong button, it looks like. It's the same bonus, so I'm not even gonna bother re-rolling it. Alrighty. Um... Is this cactus still here, or was it one of the ones that turned? Like that one was one of the ones that turned. The one... the couple... the few that were, that were ahead... We're not. Is this orange thing of any importance? That orange thing is was something Val left behind. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, as you walk for it forward, you notice you see a continuation mm -hmm. on into the canyon. Hey, are we? Are we going <laughs> deeper into the canyon or just further into the canyon? Uh, further, deeper. You're not going down. You're this. It seems to me like you're going in. It's like okay. a maze, kind of this whole I'll place. I'll just check and see how high wise. Like if we're just getting the lower height, is what I was checking. I don't mind if uh, we go further in. I just don't want to get uh, your, This is a granite rock. It is very large. You can assume it has been here for years. <laughs> Did he just now do the roll for history I thought he was going to do earlier? It's the same rock! No, it looked better from that side. Oh, okay. Kiorwani looks, <laughs> looks at their good angles. <laughs> oh, gosh. He's a rock yeah. photographer. And we're yeah, stepping back into the rock, yep. Yeah. Rock and snow. Rock and roll. Uh, walking forward. You know, walking deeper into the can- Walking deeper into the canyon. Various cacti greet you, just either sticking out of the wa canyon walls or, or from the ground. Though none of them seem to come to life. As you enter into this part Man. of the canyon. I poked the cactus with my stick. Uh, the cactus does not react. Uh, looking forward, you see what looks to be a large opening. I poked this cactus with my stick. Uh, once again. Nothing happens. <laughs> they seem to just be normal ass cacti. <laughs> uh, rest of the party, is there anything you're doing? As Whiskers and Blorberton are just walking forward, poking these cacti. Thorb <laughs> will uh, touch the sand. It is coarse and it gets everywhere in your hand. Um, uh, Whiskers will look back to everyone and goes, I'm not the smartest, but does anyone else think that looks like a giant trap as the, he looks into the pit full of cactuses? 
Why, yes. Yes, it does. Uh, quite looking. As you look forward... Has... Go on. <laughs> as you look forward, you do see two large cacti uh, down here. If you can see where the ping is. <laughs> Where's the ping? Yeah. Uh, oh, I can't see that far. No. Uh, okay, so only Darling and I think Yorb can see way off in the distance. Large cactus. Um, I have 60 feet. Oh. So only, only Darling. Darling, you see the two large cacti. <laughs> So I stand here. I can fence. Oh, uh, Val, you said you were about to do something? Or say something? Oh, I was going to ask if anybody has Firebolt or like some sort of fire spell. We could cast it at the cactuses, set them on fire, and like A, it would make more light, um, and B, it might take out some potential enemies. Um, I'm only really prepared for... No. If I had my Hellfire Breed... Looks over to Akari. Akari, do you have fireballs? <laughs> I do not have fireballs. <laughs> uh, uh, darling. Akari seems to like the ice pipe. Pokemon. <laughs> uh, darling, as you walk further in, you start to see these two... You start to see these two ca arch cacti start to move, and and do you do? they awaken. But unlike the other one, they don't seem to. As they awaken, they look over in your direction and start moving towards you. Yeah. You speak druidic. <laughs> Uh, do you say this in Druidic? <laughs> yeah. Uh, both of them look over at you, Whiskers. Surprised, but they speak back in to you. Uh, yes, we speak. We speak your tongue, weird cat thing. This is the weird cactus thing. Uh, what? How? Why are you here? Why do you disturb our rest? Uh, because you guys keep waking up and attacking the town. I don't know what you're talking about. We would never attack randomly. Well, the smaller ones that don't speak Druidic tend to attack the town. And us as we walk by. We didn't even know there was a settlement nearby. <laughs> Ignore the fact that we have phones off in the distance. <laughs> Man, you're pretty high tech for cactus. Um, we Can we introduce you in a cactus phone? <laughs> Don't worry. Our, hey, uh, Akari might be interested. He's wearing your cactus armor. You wear us? He says, looking over at Akari. <laughs> Seeing the spiked pauldron of the cactus pauldron that you're currently wearing, Akari. <laughs> Uh, they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. But he says. <sighs> Turn around, you mortals. Aren't Don't just. Mortal too? The All Mother cannot be disturbed in her slumber. What is the All Mother? She is the one who made us all. The All Mother. Oh, so it's a literal translation. Okay. Um, are they a cactus person like you, or are they look more like us mortals? <sighs> I probably tries to say something, but it's muffled. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Agar, you were trying to say something? <laughs> no, I, that, that, no, I'm saying it muffled. 
<laughs> yeah, but we still want to know what you were trying to say. Yeah, we, we... Aren't, aren't they technically mortals as well? I already asked that question. <laughs> they gave me a grunt. <laughs> Thankfully, they cannot. Mortals, like, with a sarcastic attitude. <laughs> Thankfully, they cannot understand Akari. They can only understand Whiskers at this very moment. <laughs> Right. Make uh, hmm. the all the, the all mother is like us. She is large. She is large with lar with large wings. Uh, so is she like her? And points to Val. Uh, Val, you see Whiskers, who is talking in this language you do not understand, is now just pointing at you. <laughs> In fact, you can all hear this weird conversation between Whiskers and the two large cactuses. None of you can understand what they're saying. You just see Whiskers occasionally just point at random members of the party. <laughs> Yorb just pulls out a sandwich from his bag and starts eating it as this conversation goes. Mm. No, much larger. Less bird. So they had wings. Now I'm confused. <laughs> they don't have. They don't have feathers. <laughs> okay, so they have like netty wings and are large. Is the okay. All Mother a dragon? I do not know what this dragon thing you speak of is. She is just the All Mother. So it looks like a lizard, but it has wings. Regardless, you cannot disturb her slumber. <laughs> Leave. Well, here's the thing. If she's sleeping, then what's waking up those other cactuses and having them attack our town? That is not of our concern. Yeah, but it is of our concern. <sighs> Make a persuasion check. I know it's weird, but make a persuasion check. <laughs> a disadvantage? <laughs> it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all. First of all, I'm only doing this at normal because you can actually speak their language. <laughs> okay. Still, not of not of our concern. You, you people of flesh, we do not care what happens to you. We only care about the All Mother and our own family here. Yeah, the, the thing is that we sort of have the same situation, and you guys keep attacking us, so we have to stop you attacking us. I don't want it to resolve this violently, but it looks like we're going to have to resolve this violently. We don't have to come to violence. If you just turn around and walk away, we will not. Keep having more cactus people keep attacking us. <sighs> Apparently, it happens like once a week. Does that mean anything? Mm. Once a week. No, that does not ring any bells. All we know. He starts to think for a bit. His friend on the other side. <sighs> Regardless, you still should not be here. The All Mother is sleeping as of this moment, and if she is awoken, it will not be good for anyone. Hmm. Uh, I see. Um, give me one sec. Um, so, Whiskers will just more or less repeat the general of the conversation, and he'll go, um, so apparently there's an All Mother behind them that has wings, but not feathery wings that made all of them. They don't know why the captains are attacking people, but they say they're not involved. How much I believe that, I don't know. But they also stand up to wake the mother, and that person is the only person who's probably able to explain what's going on. Um, that's what I heard so far, is the explain to them, explain to the group. In common. Mm -hmm. Any plans? 
There's a stunned silence amongst the party. <laughs> You're just thinking, thinking fast. Why he takes another large, crunchy bite of a pen? Akari, Akari, Val, and Darling, how do you react to this information? So they say they have no idea on why they are attacking the settlement outside of here. As far as they know, they don't even know it exists. Hmm. And the butter is the creator of all these cacti. Yes. Apparently they're sleeping behind them. Uh, well... Uh, violence is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Okay. Wait, wait a minute. I have, I have, uh, I realized something. Very interesting. Good. Gilf cannot speak any languages, apparently. <laughs> Even though you should be able to. <laughs> um, so... As a racial given, your speaks Dorvish, correct? Yeah, uh, we can fix that. Dorvish. Yeah, common and Dorvish. For now, yeah, we can so fix that later. <laughs> For now, we just I, assume I that you can... That I just kinda... <laughs> randomly picked his language I see it here he understood it. Ah. no you couldn't have uh, mm -hmm. druidic is a language you can only learn by being a druid and, and I don't know why that's there you shouldn't be able to select it as one of your starting races uh, starting languages Never mind. it doesn't exist there's a lie Sylvan you can take and that's something that is not commonly spoken by like animated trees and stuff hmm. yeah. Well, I... The dwarves don't like the old. Well, Darling has answered her, has given her opinion of violence. Uh, Val and Akari, what do you think of this situation? This is what Borbington thinks. Borbington just looks struggling at them. You think I can, you think I can sleep flex one of them, laddie? Wait, do you want to sleep with one of, what did you say? Repeat that Suplex. in a normal voice. So I can understand. Uh, he, he, said said like, he said suplex. He said suplex. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was just sleep with it. I'm like, what's going on here, Gia? Yeah. No. Maybe there. Um. May, uh, uh, maybe. Maybe there's a rogue faction. Well, the rogue faction doesn't seem intelligent, so something has to be telling them to do things. I, I mean, I to Akari. Uh, it's a possibility. You know, ask them if we can speak with this mother person, if she knows what's going on. Okay, um, getting a bit closer, he'd go... Uh, and uh they tense really... up as you get closer. <laughs> yeah, 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 he has his hands up, he's not gonna do anything. Um, <laughs> he puts his quarter staff back on his back, and he goes, um, see, see that small pink haired person over there they're very angry and they want to talk to your to the all mother um uh, is there any way that we could um have a conversation with her uh, how long is she been sleeping for <laughs> she's been asleep for a while ever since she gave birth right, right. interesting okay i'm gonna roll a persuasion check now with Confusion in my eyes, but okay. Uh, I'm just imagining a dragon laying eggs of cactus. <laughs> cactus eggs. It's a cactus dragon. <laughs> Wait, can... Ah, damn! I cannot roll above a five today. How can we? Oh, I could have help on um, this persuasion check. Uh, it's an advantage wouldn't have helped me. Uh, language, Mike, no way you can get yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> unless any. Your uh, the... And the uh, whiskers translate for me. Your will uh, do a dance of the first way. <laughs> <laughs> they look at the funny dwarf and off in the distance dancing, but pay it no mind. <laughs> uh, okay. She goes look. 
Are you sure? No. He goes, Whiskers, will you, will you, will you help me out here for a moment? Are you sure, sure that Dan is at least a little persuasive? <laughs> They are impressed by your dancing, Yor, but unfortunately this will not help the persuasion. <laughs> she, she looks at these two and she goes, Hello, my name is Darling. Um, I am Hello, here, her is you know. We are trying to prevent you from facing the wrath of our violence. But we would also really appreciate it if we could talk to your leader um, to prevent you... any further violence that is unnecessary. We are not here to hurt you. She drops her warhammer. I promise. Um, he repeats what she says um, as accurately as he can and truly. Okay, uh... See... A lot of the, it this sounds like kind of both a persuasion and an intimidation check because you yes, it does. brought because you brought up the violence part. <laughs> so Multiple it's like time. Uh, you know what? Still dancing for that immediately. You know what? Uh, whiskers. Okay, but DM. Yes. DM. She also dropped her warhammer. To be honest, they don't know if that means what that that could mean anything to them. <laughs> That doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be attacking them with their warhammer. They're still looking at you, and you they still see you have weapons on you. <laughs> she goes, I'm not here to hurt anyone unnecessarily. <sighs> okay. Whiskers, I will have you make another persuasion check, but using Darling's modifier for persuasion. Okay. Um... So, that is a... Six. Okay, so I'm not going to change anything. Just know that this is six higher than it should, it should be six higher. Okay, so 17. They look they look at you, Whiskers, and, and, also, look at Dar and also look at Darling as she is talking. As long as you promise not to harm the All-Mother, then fine. You can go speak with her. Just the All Mother, and you can talk to her. Just know that she will be very cranky when she awakens. Dorf, you're ready to do some morning okay. wake up dance. Appease the All Mother. Okay. Uh... The two large cactus, cactus creatures will watch to the side, letting you all go for, further in. Yeah, <laughs> darling, just pick people. up her warm hair and put it back on her back, though. Okay. Uh, all, of you start, all of you start moving forward. The darling will look at everybody and go, do not attack him. I mean, I wasn't going to. That's the person that wanted to do violence. We like every other word no she said had the word violence in it. <laughs> we come in peace, violence. I don't want to inflict violence. We will do violence unless you let us do violence. <laughs> all the vi all the violence. Darwin just said no. Okay, well, Darwin said no unnecessary. Violence. She didn't say there was going to be none. She just said, Oh, no, I agree with you. I'm just saying, you're like, you guys better not do violence. And every other word you said was violence in that sense. <laughs> the entire point of your conversation was like the word violence said like six times. <laughs> yes, he said violence a lot, honestly. <laughs> okay, I will move you over to the to the next location. Walking forward, walking forward, uh, you'll notice various of those awakened cacti who are are now just moving, watching as you move further into the den. As you keep moving uh, forward. Hmm? Sorry, Wish is going to be like, we got permission from the guys back there. We'll be quick. Uh, they don't seem to understand you as you speak, but they just seem to just keeping uh, their eye on you. I thought it would be like, Smart ones, but this is the not, these are the dumb ones. 
to be fair, the smart ones are not really that smart either. <laughs> Look, Whiskers values their intelligence because of Whiskers' already existing lack of intelligence. Uh, as you wander in, you are surrounded by more cactuses, and you see a large gathering of cactuses in front of what seems to be an open-mouthed cave. Yeah. Is the cave the all mother <laughs> Johnson. Uh, Hello, do we come in peace? <sighs> Who awakens me? Is this in a similar language or common? Is she speaking? Is she speaking common right now? She is speaking. Yeah, she would be speaking in common. Hello, the translate. Oh, darling goes. Oh, hello. My name is Darling Dog. I come from the village outside of this Conan. And we have came to speak with you about some going on in the village of some of your creations. <sighs> you see the large mound of cactuses in front of you start to shift and form until it turns into a large creature. Its wings start to outstretch, its lizard-like head leaning over as it comes out of this small cactus-like bundle. As you see, this before you. It's a cactus dragon. I was right. You do, You see, oh. anyone who's familiar with dragons, you do see a dragon that seems to be made out of cactuses. <laughs> oh, darling walks up a little closer. She goes, I mean, you know him. And she puts her hands up. <sighs> That is both amazing and terrifying. How do you not prick yourself when you move your limbs? Do you ask this, or...? Yeah. Like, whiskers, like most of my characters, have their filter. <laughs> he looks, she looks over to you, darling, as you, say, as you say this, and then looks over to Whiskers and is like... <laughs> what do is you... Is that what all cactus people say to him? Er? That's what their catchphrase is. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, they told me to call you. You were the mother. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. ignore him. He's an idiot. My I mean, only. Probably not wrong. My only. My only children are that of my own. And she says this. You see. You see on top of two cactuses. What you thought were just more growths of the cactuses. You see these creatures. Two small, like, two smaller dragonoid creatures. Similar in look to this one. <laughs> I literally, okay. Okay, okay. I literally searched Cactus Dragon, and these are the two first images that popped up. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> <laughs> Puts a uh, pillow over Akari's mouth. Shush. Are the other talking cactuses not the killed children? I, what are you? What do you speak of? I have no talking cactus children. And who are the two people outside that kept us from coming in? Uh, uh, groggily, Val, much like you with your bedhead. You can clearly tell that this one has just been woken up and is also in a t state of constant bedhead. <laughs> if she had hair. <laughs> How long have you been asleep? <sighs> sleep. I've been asleep for... <sighs> I want to... Well... I want to say a few Are months you? now. Uh, it is... <laughs> It's currently 1452. Well, some of these awakened plants here. Oh, my bad, my bad. My bad, it's 1453, not 1452. Uh, she goes, God, well, Miss Mother Lady Dragon, um, 
So some of these awaken, some of these cactuses are awakening and attacking villagers, saying they're doing it on the Rio, uh, but obviously they're not. Um, not saying anything. And else. they're attacking people uh, unprovoked, which is no good. <sighs> Hmm. Strange. I do not give birth to cactuses, despite my complexion. Oh. You do know anything I... about the sentient cactuses? Cacti? Hmm. Tell me, what do I you know about... Tell me, what do you know about dragons in general? Um, you're scaly, you breathe out some sort of element, and you like to hoard things. <sighs> well, I've heard stories of the elders of my kind. Apparently they can affect the environment they are in. Though, she looks down at herself. I guess I am getting old. <laughs> These cacti, I'm afraid to inform you, are a byproduct of me being here, it seems. Apparently I'm transitioning into an older state of myself. And that means I'm infecting I'm affecting the environment. <sighs> well, good to know that I am. Well, oh, good to know that my next stage of evolution is coming soon. Uh, we, we, we would. Could, could, could you please move your horse somewhere else, not so close to villagers? Why uh, should I? Because they're, they're, they're hurting innocent people, and we no want to, to blame you for your. Your cactus people creation thing is hurting other people, you know. Because not all dragons are bad people, you know. And you, you don't seem like a bad, a bad lady. And we don't want to blame you, but we also want to make sure our people are safe and your people are safe as well. You know, you know. Tell me, have you ever seen a dragon of my kind before? Uh, no, but we've seen a brown dragon. True, we have some those dragons. Hi, Patrick, does this dragon eat meat? We eat a variety of things. Meats, vegetables, whatever. No. <laughs> Do you like that, my sandwich? I was gonna... I'm gonna... Well, I'm gonna roll a persuasion check real quick. Okay, what are you trying to persuade this dragon? <laughs> I'm, going to pull, I'm going to pull out the three pounds of raptor meat I still have, and I'm going to, if you move, I'll give you this three pounds of raptor meat. <sighs> um, whiskers, even Whiskers, like, just sort of face palms, and is like, this thing could eat raptors for breakfast by just seeing them, and they would die from looking at the thing. And you think you're going to bribe it with three pounds? Uh, three we could pounds? Try. <laughs> we could try! We can try, or we can give him to your a Your offers the help action by throwing in half a sandwich. Okay, Three pounds and half a sandwich. Okay. Uh, yeah, eleven. Uh, <laughs> she looks yeah, over at you. Look it, but, but I offered the help action with half a sandwich. <sighs> she looks over to you, Akari and Gior, as you're offering up their food. Though I appreciate the gesture. What you are looking at, me and my two offspring, we are the last of our kind. And you want to know why we're the last of our kind? Because, pe because creatures like you, she says, motioning to the rest of you, slaughtered our kind. Okay, okay. I so what is, I so what is stopping us? So you say that the villagers are villagers nearby are mad because some creatures I had no control over are attacking them. What's stopping me from just going to that town and just raising it myself then? Okay, look, look. Here, how about let's make a deal. How 
help them. If you make these creatures stop attacking the village, we make sure the village protects you. We 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 we've got good we've got good karma in that village. But if you could just get the cacti people to stop attacking them, we we'll make sure you're protected and nobody touches you. <sighs> make a persuasion check at disadvantage, only because she does not trust you. I'm a vampire. Uh, no, it's because you're a human. It's because you are. You're a mortal. <laughs> I rolled it. Uh, you did not. Um, okay, let me click again. Where's Akari on the map? Uh, oh, look. Uh, Akari. <laughs> I'm gonna help persuade Akari, uh, as you start approaching. <laughs> Sorry, as you start approaching that dragon with the meat, though the young dragon uh, seems a bit interested, the the mother dragon looks over in your direction. I do not go near my children. Alright, I drop the raptor meat and just leave it there and just walk away. <laughs> I don't want this raptor meat anymore. <laughs> as for you, she says, looking over to Darling, you have... I have no reason to trust you. How do I know you're actually well versed in this town? How do I trust anything any of you have said? My kind has been li my kind has been lied to by your kind so so often. We were slaughtered. Bra Go ahead. But there are two advantages in you trusting me. First of all, I completely understand what you're coming from. She kind of pulls back her hair and kind of shows her fairy ears. She goes, my kind the same thing. And number two, I am a... a very important person to the king of the land, and if I tell him something, he does it automatically. And she smiles really big. Make... Uh, <laughs> Make a deception check. <laughs> Guys, she's kind of, sort of, there's a thing. There's a thing. Nobody understands. There's a okay, thing. Okay, DM, is, that a, is everything she said factually true? No. <laughs> he will not just drop that. everything and do what she asks of him. <laughs> so. <laughs> Why are you rolling at advantage? Because that is what is automatically set to DM. So it's 11. So it's 11, okay. <sighs> Zoe, you say that, she doesn't really believe that part, but she looks at your ears and then looks o down at your neck. You have been bitten. She nods. <sighs> Make a persuasion check at normal this time. You can do it! Hey, come on. If I trust you, if I do what you if I do what you ask, and you can promise me that this town can protect us. <sighs> she... She walks right up to you, darling. Her size large and imposing. Uh, Akari, as you are standing next to you, darling, your head audibly cranes up as you're just looking up at this large, spiky individual. <laughs> Um, did I? I, I don't know. Did this construction check succeed? Uh, she. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Sorry asked that. She's like, uh, doesn't matter what my action is. I don't know if it succeeds or not. Because if it, if it doesn't, I'm going to pull out some of my background because I can sympathize with this dragon. 
or I can understand where this dragon's coming from. She looks to you. She looks to you, darling, as she gets closer. Here and now, we make a deal. And if this deal is broken, I will find you and hunt you down until you are nothing more than more meat in my belly. She says, looking straight at you, darling. <laughs> oh, that's completely understandable. Uh, she she, she kind of goes, come here, come here, come here. Come to on. who? <laughs> to the dragon. She's, just, she's trying to get her to come down so she can whisper a secret. Because she can't tell everything. Like how Kyorm got closer as you did that. <laughs> She does not lower her head. <laughs> Though she empathizes with what you are going through, darling, she still is wary of you. She is not going to lower her head to you. Uh, she goes, no, I promise. It's, it's, it's just a secret, I swear. I promise, I promise it's a secret, not everybody could know. The, he the head of the creature goes down to you. Uh, Gyorb and Akari, if you want to, you can make perception checks. <laughs> To see if you can hear this. She, she whispers really low, and she goes, Kind of, sort of, the daughter-in-law of the king. Uh, can you repeat that? <laughs> can you repeat that? <laughs> uh, she, she tells her she's kind of, sort of, uh, the daughter-in-law of the king. Ah. You already don't hear this. Akari, you definitely hear this. <laughs> <laughs> My big ears actually work. <laughs> she, as you say this in her, as you say this in in her ears, she get, she looks to you a bit surprised, but then nods. <sighs> well, she goes, fine. And then she goes, not by choice. Not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> Akari, once again, has info on Darling that no one else in the party does. <laughs> again, but also no one else I have blackmail! No, I'm just kidding. You have blackmail on the daughter-in-law of the king. Uh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not going to use that blackmail. So, oh, I promise... You know, because, you know, things happen. I promise we will make sure you are protected. All you gotta do is make sure your your little cactus creation stop attacking the village. She looks up up behind you. And can now see, as some of you, if you, any of you look back, you do see some of the awakened cacti are just on top of the ridges of the canyon, just looking over at all of you. She looks over to them. <sighs> It seems I have more children to take care of. Fine. You have my word. I will not... I will keep the... These awakened cacti under wraps. And you will not see them bug this village. In return, this village keeps my location a secret. And if anything happens... And if anything happens... If I discover any... Foul play. I will hunt you all down. But the question, if they were to attack the village, we, they, the villagers are free to kill your children, yes? As you broke it as well? As long as it's not my actual children, I do not mind. Though, though, hopefully, now that I'm aware of the situation, I can keep it from being... More of an issue than it already has become, it seems. One more for, and I will let the uh, Lord Count Drake know about this deal we have made with you, and you will be under the king's protection. <sighs> Jorb uh, insists and uh, offers his half of the sandwich again. She looks over to you, Jorb, then looks back to Darling. You travel with some interesting people. Um, most of them are idiots, except for that one. And she points at Val. Hey, I'm Val. not retarded. Whiskers <laughs> runs in front of the point, pointed finger. Val, who has been completely silent this entire time. Val is just 
watching it, this all go down. Uh, there's no fight, so there's no need for her to get involved too much. So, what was the first thing? So, hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, she she yells over at Val. Hey, Val, could you come here? Uh, uh, Hi. Uh, uh, one second. Uh, Kari, you have something to say? Or Fox? Uh, no, it, let's get continue. I, I just need a little bit more. I need information because I'm note-taking. Ah, okay. George leads his case of saying he's not an idiot. <laughs> uh, Val and Darling, you can continue. <laughs> uh, she goes, hey, Val, could you come here for a moment? Why? I, mean, uh, I don't necessarily want to get next to the thing that could kill us, so, like... No offense. Oh, she's, just, she's, um... she's, 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 she's not going to hurt us, I promise, I promise. She said she wouldn't hurt us. Uh-huh. I'll stand directly behind you. What's up? Okay. You're, you, you work with the church, yes? Yes. Uh, could you talk to your church about protecting this dragon and her children? They're the last of their kind. Hmm. I might be able to. I can see what I can do. Okay, look, so now you are protected by king and church. Do you feel better now, ma'am? He just you said that out loud. <laughs> personally, uh, I... <laughs> personally, I do not trust the church. But... There. You. You. Small angel woman. Of which church are you from? Uh, honestly, I've never quite gotten the name of it. Narrator. Um, you're you're part of the narrator court oh. church. <laughs> you chose a narrator. I remember that specifically. You chose the narrator one. Okay, um, Val herself does not know. Uh, she just knows there are churches she can go to to get stuff, and things will be fine. And, like... There's churches she shouldn't go to. It's fine though. And yeah. How is Val a cleric? That's that's now the question on my <laughs> mind. <laughs> but... <laughs> like you don't have to have all the details to be, to be a good cleric. <laughs> to be a cleric. She was told I think when to she be was a half a cleric, asleep. you need all the details. Told at least half the information when she was still half asleep. I'm like, really? The priest should have known better than to tell her things when she was half asleep without her copy, because like, it's not gonna be remembered. I feel like Val is awake like three hours of the day. The rest of the time, she's either asleep or half asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I can understand. You, I do trust because I can understand. Looking at your bed head, I can understand not not wanting to be awake. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason coffee was made. Coffee? Oh, this is coffee. <laughs> oh, uh, this is paused. Um, right for a little bit. Uh, what was the other scene I knew about, darling? Uh, the other se it was back on it was back it was back in zombie land yeah when you were when darling was trying to speak in a language she thought nobody else could speak but you could understand it uh you knew that you found out that she i don't really think this is a secret anymore to the party it was yeah. basically the secret that you that she works for the king of the land you only only have one speaker, but it's like an extension of what we already know. Her relationship. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's an extension of the same secret. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's an extension of the same secret. <laughs> As a part she has not revealed to the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darling was asked if we could take a tan or. Hey, DM. Yes. I am on break right now at work. Could we take our ten minutes right now, please? Sure. Sure. Uh, we'll take our break as it seems you have convinced this dragon to take care of your cactus problem. Yay, we've solved the problem. 
Congratulations. Oh, damn. Oh, we solved the problem. I could have brought my... <laughs> Guys, I'm proud of us. We solved the problem without violence. Okay, Congratulations. I the curse I mean... one of the baby dragons. No! <laughs> I had one of the baby dragons. <laughs> is usually the one that would suggest non violent solutions in the previous. Congratulations. Oh, you is... got you got past two encounters without fighting anything. See, Whiskers would normally just kill everything, but just, they seem to be able to talk, so he thought he'd at least talk it out. And then kill them if they were still a problem. <laughs> Dang, I don't get to, I don't get to show off what cactus dragons can do. <laughs> I do want to know what the cactus dragon can do, but story wise it'd be weird for us to just murder her now. Yeah, I was gonna pull out Makari's like backstory a little bit, trying to ease the tension from this dragon, but it we're all worked out. Yeah, I was gonna get on cactus armor and turn into a bear and pretend to be a cactus dragon. <laughs> I was like, uh you know, Akari species is all he knows. He's the only one of his kind. So, yeah, <laughs> he could sympathize with <laughs> and understand where this dragon's coming from. Just because, odds are you're probably not going to be fighting this thing, but this is what she has. <laughs> I hate you, DM. Why would you make that passive trait on a dragon? It's up. <laughs> I mean, she also has this and this. <laughs> Why? Why? I guess water breath makes sense. Also, it only has a plus seven, plus zero, which is a weird thing to do, but okay. Also, and a plus seven to hit. No, it could only do it six times for the reign of thorns, and only one. No, 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 no. Uh, for for recharge stuff, it's they use it Roll and dice. yeah. They use it, and then you roll, and then you roll a d6. If you get like what the recharge number is, then they can use it again. Ah. It's how they balance out powerful techniques like dragon breath and whatnot. Yeah, but the cool thing is, I could fight this, but I'd need to know because I would hit it once with my bear stuff, and I'd be like, okay, and then I'd rage and get a spiky tail, and I'd just keep stabbing it with reach because it only affects it if it attacks within five feet of it. So with my armor, what if I try to hug this dragon? Do we both take damage? <laughs> uh, yes, you would. <laughs> you would be in a constant str <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, you could grapple this dragon. It is only a large creature. <laughs> you would take 2d6 damage every single turn because you're a creature that touches the also, dragon. Yeah, it also would be taking damage because of my armor. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd also have to win a grapple check with your strength score. I guess a dragon. <laughs> My strength is possible, just not probable. It's possible against a young dragon, I will you, say. You, you, you would think my highest is dexterity, but my highest is actually charisma. Wow. <laughs> Why? Just, by one. just by one. Just by one. You're an intelligence casting, dex using character, and charisma is your highest stat. Direct uh, dexterity is my second highest. It's like one point over in my charisma. I understand this. What is your intelligence? Because I'm a rogue. Because I'm also a rogue, and it, and it fits with my backstory. I have to be cunning and you might as well just been a bard. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Essentially, Akari is not. Akari is not built to be optimized. He's built to be a character. <laughs> yeah, I'm built to be oh, a okay. character, not optimized. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm used to like to optimize myself. I make my characters make sense, but I also optimize them because why not? Yeah, but obviously my character has flaws. That's why I built it as. Yeah. It He's not the best rogue, but thanks to his backstory, that's what he became. <laughs> yeah, congratulations! You have discovered the last three remaining cactus dragons in the world. <laughs> Yeah, and they met the last Kitsune in the world, apparently. Did they become a, a mummy cactus dragon? A <laughs> mummy cactus dragon. No. I mean, there have there have been tales that there may be an undead dragon living somewhere in the hollows. Wait, no one knows where. <laughs> Alright, so... 
after this break, are we gonna get information? Try to get information about the what, what was the place again? Uh, the Grotto, yeah, Grotto. The, yes. And are we gonna start heading there? Because I really want to level up. <laughs> Sure, we did not get to level up in this campaign. No, no levels for you. You get nothing. You're level five forever. God, I can barely. All my good stuff is like at level seven. It sucks. Evasion is pretty nice. Hey, you have uncanny dodge. I do have uncanny dodge. I also have. Uh, what? What? Uh, like parry, which also. Protects me. Level seven is pretty nice for me too. I get extra. And I get if one attack decides to kill me, I could use telekinetic parry not to do that. Level eight, I get the funny. I get the funny ability to be able to spider climb, and regardless of my form. I could be a bear, but spider I climbing. All about my future clan character. Spider bear. Spider bear. Does what the highest spider, spider bear does. we're going to get is probably what? One, two, three, four, five, ten? Potentially ten. Honestly, I see you guys possibly capping out at ten. Unlike the other two oh. parties, where I. <laughs> There are sins that could potentially go up to 20, and probably will go up to 20, considering the choices they have made. And Zanzibar, which... Oh, we will die. Try. Zanzibar, I see that ending at level 12 or 13. Scorching Ray and Orbital Blight. Or you'll die to the Celestials. Either or. If we play our cards right Silly GC, Anya cannot die. You know, every time you say this, you just you just challenge me more and more to. Oh, <laughs> Ren, by the way, this is for selling break. Uh, they 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 got to Spirey where Greed is, and well, right. they did not go the same route you guys did with finding out where Greed was. <laughs> oh, what did they do? Well, uh. The, bar the barbarian decided to drag one of the smiling citizens into an alleyway looking for cats that she did not trust because she could not talk to them. Even though I, she had done the exact same thing that Ren did, that Nero did, and, pet and petted one of the cats and got the sticky film on her fingers. Despite all of this, despite all of the warnings I had dropped, she still went into an alleyway by herself with a strange, with a strange smiling person, and got attacked by that and a bunch of cats. Well, I did, I did warn them. I'm like, the people there are sticky. You know, I, I did. <laughs> yeah, and then they got to the first, and now they're in the first floor of the house. Agreed. And they, and they too, somehow have bypassed the traps in a similar manner as you guys did, where instead of using a potion of climbing, they just flew over the glass bottle trap. Aha, uh -huh, but because I used a broom properly, I got a jar of indestructible dirt. And I got a jar of yeah, yeah, she, 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 they made that exact same joke when they, when they got it. Obviously, it's iconic. I'll get a job, dude. I'll get a job, dude. Yeah. Also, how big is this jar of dirt? Is it supposed to be able to fit a person in it? Jesus Christ. Well, well, he, well. here's the thing. The jar of dirt would have then shrunk. The jar of dirt is, like most magical items, it, it resizes to the person that, is, that has it around it. Okay, so it's size to fit a small person. No, no, no. It's well, it's size. It was a reason. Originally, it was going to go to whatever your size is, but then since nobody was in it, it just turned into a normal glass bottle. Okay, so how big is it? Uh, it's it's um, it's about the size of your average wine bottle, I'd argue. Oh well, that's less amusing. I was imagining it was a 
huge jar of dirt, but I can use it as a weapon now. Improvised weapon, indestructible jar of dirt. <laughs> just just uncork it and spray it the battlefield, causing it to spawn. I don't think it's an infinite sand generation. We could test that out later. I mean, you can always refill it. We I mean, yeah, cast but... a spell of multiplication on it. DM, can I cast... Can I use it to cast pocket sand? I mean, there is no cork. There's technically no cork to this bottle. It is. There's really no opening to the top of it. Wait, what is it? It's more like a fucking snow globe. It's it's like a snow globe. It it looks like a wine bottle, but the top of it is completely closed, and it does not seem to have any means of like how to open okay. it. So it's just a glass club. Basically. <laughs> It was sand. It's yeah. <laughs> and it counts as magical. <laughs> so. Aha. See, I'm sad that it does. I was hoping you'd say it's indestructible and doesn't count as magical, so I could use the catapult spell on it. And just launch it at people over and over again. <laughs> Congratulations. You have a <laughs> heavy glass club. <laughs> and unfortunately. For it. Don't worry. And I and unfortunately, much like the bard in your campaign, uh, Ren, I'm the other bard, also got attacked by the mimic chairs. <laughs> Look, I was only down for a second. I think it was a bit of a pot shot because you let it attack me twice before I even had a turn. Okay, it's not my fault they rolled a good initiative. <laughs> Actually, it is. You're the one who rolled it. You know how good I am at rolling initiative. <laughs> but you admit it's your fault now. That's not... I don't control my initiative rolls. They just happen. <laughs> you press a button and the initiative rolls happen. You literally control the initiative rolls. But it's all random chance. I have no say on what actually happens. I don't know. There's actually... I'm pretty sure there's some functions in D uh, D20 where you can manipulate the rolls or make them set a certain thing. Hmm. Uh, is everyone back? Um, I have to send my obituary to my supervisor real quick. Uh, no hey, worries. You're dead? Hmm. <laughs> she said obituary, right? Yeah, she did say obituary. Here, I'm listening. Rest in peace. Darling dog. I mean, technically, she did die once, so she is a vampire. <laughs> That'd be funny. Like, a, a vampire just attends their own funeral. They're like, man, they lived a good life. GC, do you expect us to resolve this non-violently? I mean, I, I mean, I had, I mean, I had an, I, I had a plan in case either one happened, because the other one I didn't expect you guys to be able to talk to, but then I remembered. All right, all right, one of you does speak druidic, <laughs> so you could talk to these creatures. Aha! The power of druids. <laughs> Had you not been able to talk to Reddick, they would have just made some angry grunts at you, and had you not been le had you not left, they would have just attacked you. <laughs> this one, yeah. you, this one, regardless, you could potentially have talked your way out of it. <laughs> okay. For every sentient dragon I've encountered in your campaign, I've let live. <laughs> eh? No, the brown dragon. You do not let. Sentient. The brown, to us, it's not sentient. The brown right? You guys didn't let it. You didn't. You guys didn't let it talk to you. But okay. <laughs> okay guys, didn't choose to talk I'm to sorry us. about that. No worries. Okay. <laughs> As we come back, uh, you have conv uh, having talked to this dragon. She seems convinced that the town. That she seems convinced and a very wary alliance. She will willingly. Keep her oh, keep her cacti creations under check. 
as long as the village does not attack them and offers them their protection. You have also offered the protection of the king of the land and potentially the church. <laughs> Which church? We don't know, because Val doesn't understand her own religion. <laughs> Val is a cleric. <laughs> Val, <laughs> Val secretly this whole time has been a fake cleric. Uh, Val just exists and let and sees what happens because it is what it is. I mean, that's sort of that very on mind. point for the narrator, actually. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. thing that comes to mind for me is just the well, you're right about one thing, Master. Negotiations were short. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you know a faster way out of this, or do we have to walk all the way back? <sighs> I can't carry you all, and I don't want to carry you all. Okay, no problem. Just know that the cactus is, that those cactus creatures will not attack you all on the way out. Okay, thank you all. I will make sure to deliver the message to the king before you. Um, this is a little off point, but the way you said that, I just heard when you said thank you. I was like, thank you, come again. <laughs> Yorb offers uh, his half of the sandwich for the third and final time. <laughs> Why do you so desperately want me to eat your, eat your food? Is it poisoned? No. He looks it's over really good. <laughs> Whiskers, she would stop you from getting anywhere near her horde. <laughs> oh, is there an actual horde or is it just cactuses? Uh, you don't see what's inside the cave. Uh, actually, make me a perception check. Oh, that's a... No, it's not poisoned. I just made it myself, and I'm wondering what you think about it. I'll pass. Uh, Whiskers, as you... You do see the glint of some gold in the cave yonder. Ooh. Uh, mm. If you try the wall... I would advise not going anywhere near my horde, cat. <coughs> Yorba takes ten gold from his pocket and chucks it into their hoard. Whiskers, huh. ninja catches the ten gold. <laughs> I'll make a dexterity check to see if you can actually... No, make a sleight of hand check to see if you can catch it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'd have passed a dexterity check. Let's do a sleight of hand. Uh, do I have that skill? Uh, do, 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 do. Nope, but I do have a good deck, so... Uh... Your as you throw it, as you throw it, hoping to get it into the cave, it you see whiskers and his feline agility catches it midair. Oh, uh, well, that was supposed to be a gift. Thank you. I appreciate your gift. <laughs> uh, whiskers, you are ten gold richer. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm closer mm. to buying my ring. Uh. Oh. oh my god, the ring. <laughs> oh my god, the ring! It's all about it. He my just wants the ring. My precious! He wants the Yorm, ring to Yorm rule just all. wants the Hellfire Great Axe. That's... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Mom, for helping us. We'll be on our way to let you go back to bed. You may refer and to me as Chusey. Chusey? What? C H U S I. Chusey. Juicy. Okay. Juicy. Okay, you Get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> Wax you all with a bottle. Get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> My mind wasn't in the gutter. I was like, it kind of makes you, sense. Look, she is a cactus I you say, dragon. I heard you say choosy, like, like choosy, like pick and choose. Um, what are the names of the kids? Like he'll say as he approaches one of them. <sighs> we dragons choose our own names once we've come a birth. Well, age. Hey, what's your name? Oh. Uh, as you as you speak to this one, he, uh, you'll see Chusey off in the distance, glare at you. You do not speak your tongue. Can you uh, just do you destroy it? I think that's the dragon that I fed the raptor. Yeah, that's the dragon I fed the raptor meat to. <laughs> uh, you would notice that he is in fact eating the raptor meat. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll let you eat then. <sighs> Bait. No. Potential pet in the future? No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> Akari, Akari with his with his pet pet cactus wyvern dragon. <laughs> As the mother dragon comes to kill him. Hey, he, he chose to this life. <laughs> Akari, one v one. Akari, just one v one. This young dragon by yourself. <laughs> I'll watch. No! You can add, you can take her. Can you all group up behind so I can get my sneak attack in? <laughs> Akari, roll in this room. No! <laughs> I'm not attacking the dragon! With this information in tow, uh, you return you return back to you return back to the map. And with that you also return to town. By now it is Basically midnight at this point as you get back to town. <laughs> the night air the night air cool to your skins, those who can feel. <laughs> as you return back to I assume, as you return back to town, Barpington in tow, uh do you Barpington looks to the rest of you Ah, that was a mighty fine adventure. Thanks for taking me along, laddies. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick. Uh, out of character. So uh, I foresee our few. Oh no, that's red. Hmm? Whiskers moved. <laughs> oh, sorry. The inverted cross. Sorry. Yeah, I was like, our luck is not great in the future. <laughs> okay, now I'll ruin it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> our luck <looks> great. <laughs> okay. Now our luck sideways. You That's didn't have to. Uh, sideways. Uh, Blarpington. <laughs> Blarpington looks at you all. Thank you for the adventure. It's been a while since these old bones have gotten any action. It was fun. Um, I would stay off the cactus juice. Mostly because the captain should leave us alone, and because it gave you a horrible hero. I don't know what you're talking about, laddie. He says in his drunken slayer. <laughs> I just start pouring water on him. <laughs> and you can go back in his little lake. <laughs> I think he has an actual Let home. him go back home. If none of you stop him, Barpington will leave the party. <laughs> Later, Blarpington. Okay, you are all back in town. It is currently midnight. What are you doing? <laughs> Going to bed. I need that long rest. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's midnight. Is the library closed now? Uh, the li uh, definitely. The library definitely. Granted, churches are usually open 24-7, but you can, considering the last couple of nights have been sleepless nights outside of the one last night, you can easily assume that you're not going to get any got get into anywhere, any important buildings at least okay. this night. Okay. The cactus phone it has followed you. <laughs> I imagine you got one of them like uh, which we call it uh, the the old. Phones that have the cone, the cone phone. That's what it sounds like. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm. My parents, my grandparents, have one of those. <laughs> uh, Georg, you were doing something. He's 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 going to bed. He's an old man. <laughs> okay. If there's no objections, you can all have a long rest. And and I am happy to announce, congratulations! You have unlocked your secret level up. <laughs> Hey, I don't get anything out of it. Okay. I have to wait for Why? Wh why is about? Why is about not getting a level? Why is about wanting level ups? I give you a level oh, wait, wait, up. Why is about I that? Never mind. I get expertise. I'm good. Yeah, you better stop oh, complaining. <laughs> I can easily take this away. No. Yes. Uh, remember, uh, roll twice for HP, you get to choose which one you want. Yeah. Fun fact. Oh, and I get to, I get to finally change, yeah, I get to change my spells. I'm definitely, uh, taking the seven over that one. 
<laughs> I don't. I, I really don't want Mage Hand. I don't. It might be. I mean, you're an arcane trickster. Mage Hand is the most useful with you. <laughs> Honestly. I'll take away Telkin. Don't you get Mage Hand like generically? Like you don't get a choice, I thought, or is that not a thing? Is that not you get, you get a you get a thing. Yes, you get uh, you get mage hand. Some essentially, you leisure, can use your C. Yeah, leisure, leisure mage. You, yes, leisure. you can use your you can use your mage hand to use your thieves tools. It's also invisible too. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. arcane tricks. Mage hand is best with arcane tricksters. But if you don't want to, like, you can it, easily... It can, help me, it can help me steal things. <laughs> and Akari so far. stuck in a horrible situation. I don't, I don't know if I see a level of Druid, a level of Barbarian, or a level of Monk. Let's see. I'm deciding whether I do the ability score increase, or like get another feat. I also decide that if I take Barbarian level, I have to decide if I want ability score increase or a feat. <laughs> Darling, I don't... Darling, what is your level up looking like? <laughs> I, I haven't decided. To be honest, you 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 don't have to you don't have to decide right now. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that I'm just saying you guys do get a level up because you did complete the specifications for getting the level up, which was you could have just completed one of the quests and been on your merry way, but if you decided to help out this town fully, I would have given you a level up. And, well, you decided to complete both tasks. So, congratulations. I'm just gonna roll hit, die. Right. He's obtuse. Okay. Um, it's a different angle. I'm gonna take the 12. Oh, God. Oh. Val, you get more spell slots. Mm. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, Claire, the future. I future. believe it. Sixty. So this spell makes me learn vo vo uh, void. Oh. I'll take the ten <laughs> without rolling again. <laughs> yeah, I'll roll again. Do it. Do it, coward. Do I mean, it. I I can pick the fine, but I pick the better one of the two, right? Yes. Well, you can choose which one you want. <laughs> I'll take the higher number, please. I also rolled an eight and a seven, so I didn't roll any worse. Okay. Let's to to you. Hmm. What is that? God, there's so many beasts. Like yeah, I assume that after we go to the inn, we just go to the inn and like rest and take it the next day because there's nothing gonna happen to us in the middle of the night. Uh, no. Where'd go? Uh, if uh, you can all level up, you can all level up on your own time or right now, it's up to you. Just know, um. just know that after completing all the stuff, you would in fact get a level up. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. Amazing. I like okay. green flame blade. <laughs> That's a fun one if they're clustered together. Okay. Uh, if nobody has... Uh, if... Uh, we can discuss level ups later if anyone has any questions on what they want to do. Uh, for now, you all wake up the next morning. Or, I assume most of you do. Val, do you wake up the next morning? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I do. Val, with your constant bedhead, you wake up in the morning. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm gonna do something wild with my level up. As you all wake up the next morning, it is it is late into the morning because you did get to bed around midnight last night. So, what are you all doing? <laughs> Darling heads straight to the library. Okay. Which will follow. Whiskers and Darling waking up in the morning, you head off towards the library. 
Does anyone follow them, or do you stay behind in the inn? <laughs> I will take the collector. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna get magic. It's like I'm. I have the option to either get super oh. stronger, and then, okay. or I could just be like Shadow Wizard Money Gang. We love casting spells by getting artificers initiate. Okay, so from the sound of it. It's only Whiskers and Darling are going to the library. <laughs> uh, Gilb would want to join them, just to, but I'm just trying to brain on what I want to do this level up, you know? Yeah, uh, you can wait on that, then, because... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Val, would you be joining them to the library? I don't think so this time. I think I'll just stay at the end and try to drink coffee and wake up. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Val trying to constantly wake up, even though she's in a constant state of either being asleep or drinking coffee, it seems. <laughs> okay. Uh, she, goes, uh, she goes to the library and finds the guy. Uh, you'll see, you'll see the familiar Har Lupin just behind his desk reading a book. Uh, as the three of you enter, he looks up. Ah, there you are. <laughs> I was looked all over for you yesterday. Uh, I ha I was afraid you had perished uh, and not attacked. <laughs> well, no, we uh, we went to go take care of the cactus attacks. We found out some interesting information. We made a deal for you. Oh. Um. Do you know oh, what yeah. caused these attacks? <laughs> And uh, deal. Yes, it is a it is a adult to ancient dragon that is living in the canyon. Actually, it was a young. She is the last one. Actually, it was a young cactus dragon. God, she was oh, about to turn into. That. Well, yeah, she was about to turn into an adult. Huh? Yeah, there was a cactus dragon. Uh, cactus she dragon. Said, <laughs> yes, a cactus dragon. I don't make this up. Oh, imagine uh, she a said a that she would keep her ice. creations away Agreed. from your village and protect you if you protect her and do not attack her and her kin. But if they well, attack you unprovoked, you may attack back. Well, eh, I have no reason to distrust you. I see. I guess we'll find out in a week if these attacks will stop. But if what you say is true. I suppose the reward for beating the for taking care of these is also in order. As he as he gets up and go Ugh. Really it's my brother who should be providing you this, but he seems to be off on one of his hunts yet again. But he provides with you a sack filled with five thousand gold pieces. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Takes it. As for the other rewards, I have, I managed to, I managed to scrounge around and through my own connections was able to get you a cart. It should help you navigate these deserts a lot quicker than you, than on foot. Oh, thank you so much. And as for that other thing you wished for, he goes back to his desk and closes the book that he was reading and hands it to you. He hands it to you, darling. This is a book that will provide you with all the information you need on what. Thank you. We we scoured high and low through our libraries and. Unfortunately, only found one book that seemed to have any mention of this Misty Grotto. And to be honest, whether you choose to believe it or not is up to you. It seems to be the scribblings of a madman. Can I keep this? Yes, you may. 
We will bring it back once we are all done studying it, because I'm pretty sure we have a friend here who wants to come back and get something later. Hmm. Well, I suppose you know, on the behalf of my brother, and the behalf of the Lupin family, and all of Lycan City, I should thank you all for saving us from not only our horrible nightmares, but also these cactus people. Yes, uh, like I said, we should not attack you. Do not attack the dragons, or else, uh, she's going me. to eat me. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, they live in the canyon, if you didn't explain. Hmm. I was aware of a canyon to the east of us. Uh, to the west of us. So, uh, mm -hmm. I suppose that's what happened to all our scouts, though. Hmm. It's troubling. I hope the dragon wasn't the reason those scouts were dead. No, uh, it was The asleep. dragon was a, has been asleep for a while now. Oh. Hmm. Well... Maybe the scouts are actually alive and they just decided to fuck off, I don't know. I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> or, or they could have been attacked by cactus people, you know. Hmm. Or eh. some other dragon. But the green spiky cactus dragon do not attack. Believe me, none of, a, none of us have a death wish. <laughs> none of us are prepared to be fighting a dragon. Well, outside of the brown ones, but... There are more pests, as you've possibly noticed in our in this kingdom. Yes. So she said she would help protect you. You protect her. Simple as that. We will be on our way. Thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, if you have any connections in the capital, please do let Lord Count Rick know we are on our way. I'll hmm. um, <laughs> I will, I will make sure if we get anything, you are the first to be told. Are you planning on staying in our town for much longer? No, I think we are heading out today. Mm, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, if you go to the south of town, to the southeast of town, you'll find your cart ready there. Uh, it will be pulled by some of our finest camels that we were able to find. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> whiskers and Gyor. Uh, whiskers and Gyor, if you are also there, do you have anything to say to this man? Or have anything you want to do to stop Darling? <laughs> mm. Wait, I was stopping open what again? Oh. Stopping her from what? What was the? What was the? Well, she she is currently leaving. Uh, going, assumedly going back to the inn with the book and gold that she that you all were rewarded with. Before uh, leaving, your but will think out the half of his sandwich again and offer it to the man. Uh, I've already Good had. Day. I've already had breakfast. Uh, I do not require any more. Uh, but thank you. <laughs> he says, looking at you, not taking your sandwich. <laughs> All right then. I'm gonna have to try it. As he follows, he follows closer to Darling to make sure he gets the, his share. Darling, who has gone into our former dread for some reason. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, wasn't on purpose. <laughs> By the way. She hates dwarves coming for her money. Uh, Whiskers, is, it, is there anything you wish to do while at the library? Oh, yeah. He's gonna wait till the people hand out the money, and then he's gonna try to, uh, beg and barter everyone to lend him money to buy the ring. <laughs> okay, uh, if you all return back to the, uh, Val... Val and Akari, uh, assumingly you'd be in the tavern area. Tavern area, you would see the rest of your party walking back in, Darling holding a book in one hand and a large sack, and a large sack in the other one.
Oh, and darling died again. Hi, lazy. Uh, she pulled. I come back. And Val, uh, Val and Akari, uh, do you have any reactions to seeing your party just walk in? Is that a nope. freaking Akari? <laughs> Away with them. <laughs> Across duplication. <laughs> he is mirror image, though. <laughs> ah, yeah, Shadow Clone YouTube. I'm very much aware. <laughs> yeah. Um, Whisker sort of just waits for her to do what she's gonna do because he knows what she's gonna do. I uh, I go in. I sit at a table. Okay, darling sits at a table. <laughs> The most antisocial party in the universe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Whisker stands on the table. The uh, barkeep of. He pulls out the bag of gold and, and counts out what, uh, 750 pieces each. Uh, Whiskers, as you stand on top of the table, the barkeep will be like, Oi, get off the table, unless you're willing to pay for it. Fine. He stands on a chair instead. Okay. The rest of the party, you can you can clearly see you, darling, evening out the gold. <laughs> Does anyone want to do something? <laughs> yeah. Um, Whiskers goes, okay, so you remember when you said that we had emergency money if we need it kind of thing? Um, I need emergency money to buy a ring. No, it's not considered emergency. Well, see, we're leaving it, then I, we will have the is... ring. Okay, look, how much is how much is the ring? A mere small, a thousand gold. No, you see, you're put one hundred, uh, one thousand two fifty back into the bag with uh, her separate pouch she has. She goes, no, it is not an emergency. You do not need that. I do need okay, that. Okay, here is your 750 gold. We can come back to this town later. And you can get your ring once you have more gold. Mm. However, that ring is not an emergency. And you do not need it over right now. However, uh, you will be like, I have some shopping to attend to as he makes his way. Um over to the the smith over here yeah. so okay. is that so oh, sorry. no no go ahead go friend. ahead Do, um, no. that 750 is that on top of the other 750 we got or is it yeah, or is it the same 750 as from earlier we got paid once, and now we've gotten paid a different time. Okay, so we have two seven fifties. I have to do fast. <laughs> so we have a one thousand five hundred gold. At least. A lot of gold. No, it's not a lot of gold anymore. Uh, anyone want to give uh, Whiskers a small loan of three thousand gold? No. I'll pay it back. I'm good for it. You don't need a ring that turns you into a tree. But it's a powerful magical item that will be very helpful in our journey. <laughs> what is that ring good for? Like, I, I honestly actually want to know. What is this ring actually good for? Okay, like, out of so character? One, yeah. Absolutely it lets me nothing. Cast spells while in a wild shape form, which means I can heal people while beating people up. It also so you're like that. You're like a good version of that tree from Harry Potter. Two, I can turn into a giant tree and beat people up with very good stats. So you're like that tree from Harry Potter. Like, if I remember correctly, I get like a twenty-something strength score, all in tree form. Uh, you get to turn into a tree ant. 
you gain the stats of a tree ant and also just have the ability to cast spells. Yeah. So I gain a 23 strength score. <laughs> I'll transform so you're a walking into a tree. tree. While I am in tree form, I have 23 strength and be a barbarian with 23 strength. So this sounds very helpful to the party. You can all, so as a tree ant, you can animate one to two trees as well. Theoretically, if you're, if you're in an area with trees, yes. Yeah, but we're in a desert, kind of so. Trees. <laughs> it's kind of What would weird. you classify a cactus as? Not a tree. Are you sure? I am pretty certain. Is. <laughs> Lego Fortnite lets you get wood from cactuses. So what say what I hear Gorb just say is that it's a tree. Yeah. Uh Val, do you what do you do do you give Whiskers any money for his adventures in the getting this ring? <laughs> um Sure. You know what? Sure. Um, I'll give you 265. They're considered a shrub. Oh. Um, it, it, <laughs> a shrub? Shrub yeah. tree? Really uh -huh. yeah, Close enough to the tree. No. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. Really? All the knights who say me? Most acts are considered long-lived <laughs> shrubs. Hey, who am I giving the 265 to? I'm I'll just going to move it. Uh, whiskers. Okay. It gets me closer. Um, time to go just try to beg and beg a shopkeeper for... A wait, wait, wait. How much do you need? Okay, you need 300 so in total. I need 3,000 in total. Sorry, 2,000. Yeah. Literally, I need 2,935 before her 265. Good luck with that. I agree. Good luck with that. Um, I'm at 2,300 and... So we did this thing for town. You could use that. So, what are the shops that are in town again? Okay, so there's a weapon shop, an item shop, and then there's also a potion person shop. Yes. The weapon before. also includes armor. I need better weapons. Uh, I can show you. Hold on, as I, I can put. Uh, ask me for a list of. I can give you the items list for what each shop sells. Uh, which one were you looking for specifically, Akari? The weapon shop. Okay. Here are the okay. weapon. Here are the current available weapons and the prices that come with them. Okay. Just um, is the half iron great axe still available and half price to get? Ooh. Is uh, Gior had his eye on that there, and he wants it for oh, his. Oh, or ship. Uh, before any decisions are made, I should also point out, uh, for you, Gior, the Hellfire Great Axe. If you do ask, what that does? <laughs> uh, yeah. What does it do? What's it? What's it? Okay, the Hellfire. Well. Hellfire weapons, or in this case a Hellfire Great Axe, this weapon is fashioned from infernal iron and traced with veins of Hellfire that shed dim light in a 5 foot radius. Any humanoid killed by an attack made with this weapon has its souls funneled into the River Styx, where it's reborn instantly as a lemur demon. Devil. So, it adds, it adds no pluses or anything of that nature. It's just... It's just something that you would use to say fuck you to a specific humanoid and turn them into a demon. <laughs> I mean, Yorb would completely ignore it. He just sees Fire Axe right now. <laughs> That's yeah. it. He's like... Yeah, unfortunately Hellfire... Unfortunately Hellfire weapons are not nearly as cool as they sound. <laughs> yeah, so, but they do they do fire damage or no? No. Nope. They just... Oh. They just shed five. They just shed a f shed a five foot 
lights around them, and if you kill a humanoid, their soul is damned, essentially. I see. Uh, what does the Reaver Longbow do? The Reaver Longbow. Uh, one moment as I pull up these items. Because it has been a bit. <laughs> the Reaver Longbow. Do, 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 do. You gain a... Okay, the Reaver Longbow. It is a surprisingly nasty looking bow. Uh, it is a surprisingly nasty looking bow. Uh, it would be described to you as red and black. It has a chain on it that connects that can be connected to your arrows. Uh, here's what it does. You gain a plus two bonus to its hack and damage rolls made with this magical weapon. It is considered a longbow. It requires attunement. Barbed arrow. The reaver has two charges. While attuned to this longbow, you can expend one of its charges and use the attack action to make a special ranged attack with a barbed arrow that is attached to a demonic chain. This attack has a normal range of 50 feet and a long range of 100 feet. If you're able to make multiple attacks with the attack action, this attack replaces one of them. On hit, the barbed arrow is embedded into the target, dealing an extra 1d6 piercing damage. If the target is a large or small creature, that creature must succeed on a DC 17 saving throw, strength saving throw, or be pulled to the bow and impaled on its balanced spike. You will notice that this bow also has a spike just jutting out of it. <laughs> For an, for an additional 2d6 piercing damage. You know what? Take all my money. Uh, all no, the 1500. <laughs> no, why are you wasting your money on a bow when you're a strength build? No. No, wait. This is it. Alright, that's right. That's a deck thing. Yes. <laughs> I have no decks. This would be a good bow for yeah. possibly Akari, but... I don't have the money to buy that. Uh, well, okay. You got, you got. Oh, that's right. It's not half off for you. Nope. I mean, I Wait. could if your the money and he could buy it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Akari. yeah I'll, I'll buy. I'll, I'll buy you the bow. Uh, well, Akari, what did, what is sticking out to you specifically in this? So, I want to know what the bloodstring offering bow does. Uh, the bloodstring. Oh, the Bloodstring Offering Bow. Bloodstring Offering. A pulsing vein for a beating heart seems to be a fair trade. How this works. 1d8 piercing, range 100, long range 600. It is a long bow. You take one slashing damage when you attack with this bow. A creature hit with this bow must make a DC 12 constitution save or take 1d4 bleed damage at the start of its turn. It can attempt to save at the end of each of its turns. <laughs> Uh, Dreader, oh, just cloak, Pawn stuff. Uh, the uh, what was that? A card? Dreader. The Dreader silk cloak or something like that. Dre ah. Dreader, Dreader. Ah, yes. It gives you a plus three to AC. <laughs> Could I wear that on top of my armor? <laughs> uh, yes, actually. <laughs> This exotic cloak is light and soft to the touch, yet it is very strong and resilient. It is made from specially prepared drider silk. The lightweight aspect of the drider silk cloak makes it a very attractive substitute for those who cannot don armor. The, also, the other one that's actually intriguing, because I searched it out, is the Soul Forger Shiv. The Soul Forger Shiv. It, it does one... D4 piercing damage and 1D4 radiant damage. Yes. This plus one dwarven dagger glows radiant energy, which enables it to pass through cloth and skin, leaving no visible wound. The dagger deals an additional 1D4 radiant damage per attack. As a bonus action, you can choose to leave this dagger impaled t into your target. This target, The target suffers 1D4 radiant damage at the start of every round for as long as they are impaled. For one hour, the blade can only be removed by the attuned user. You gain advantage on survival and perception checks 
use to track the target. After one hour, the blade magically teleports back to you. Essentially, oh. it's <laughs> essentially it's just a yeah. Essentially, you get a bit of radiant damage, and you can just leave it in people. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really intriguing because I could do that if I when I attune to this weapon, I could leave it into somebody and use uh, my other spell. Uh, my where is it? The green flame blade is my regular, and sell my actual sword. Uh, I don't believe the green flame blade stays on your it weapon. Actually, yeah. No, it, it just it it it's basically it summons a sword in my hand. I think. No. No, no. that's not how green flame, green flame blade works. Says, when you hit with a weapon, it as casting the spell, you take your action to do it. You make an attack roll with the weapon you currently are wielding. You hit yeah. with the weapon, and then it does the effect of Green Flame Blade if you hit. Which is... Uh, oh, so it's target, basically an attunement to my... It, it basically weapon. puts a spell on my weapon. Okay. It's a spell on a melee attack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's between... It's between the Dryder Silk Cloak, the... Reaver, Longbow, and the Soul Forger Shiv? Yeah. Or you could give your money to a your. worthy cat. No. I will also, I, I'll also <laughs> point out, Akari, you can use rapiers, because because yeah, Rogue... Yeah. Rapiers. Yeah, What's so. the Blood Rose Rapier do, then? Uh, the Blood Rose Rapier grants a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls Life Leech. When a two when attuned and used to attack, a creature hit by this weapon must make a constitution saving throw with a DC of 15. On a failed save, they suffer an additional 2d6 necrotic damage, and you are healed for half that amount rounded down. On a successful save, they still suffer the necrotic damage, but you are not healed. That's stupid. I so, potentially, if I give my money to Gior, I can get the Shiv and the Rapier. Uh, potentially, yes. Yeah. Essentially, does have well, essentially, do you want weapons that can cause different elemental damage, or do you want def a higher defense, <laughs> is what you're, is what yeah, you're that, down that's to? Yeah, basically <laughs> what it's down to. If I play my cards right, I won't be a hit attacked very much. So I'll take the rapier and the ship. The knife. Okay. Uh, and that is yeah. that'll be one thousand. A thousand gold. Your pays for the item. One thousand five hundred and fifty. I think it's yes, no, there are no. Really? That's all my gold. <laughs> okay. Uh, for easy sake, I have sent you both of the items. Okay. And the rapier is a finesse weapon, so. Yep. I yep. don't have any advantage on finesse. Oh, well, I have. Well, I can use it, but I don't have it. You can oh, use your. Which one do you like better, that one or that one? Um, first one. You said the first one. Uh, essentially, the finesse weapon is. <laughs> essentially, with a finesse weapon, you can use it uh, one-handed, and it can also use your dex modifier for damage. Ah, uh, that—that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Essentially, finesse is if you want to use dex, and is really good if you're a rogue. Uh, everything else yeah. is strength. <laughs> now, you can't dual wield while wielding it, unless you have the dual wield feet, which you don't currently have. I don't. So you can only use it, you couldn't use a bonus action to attack with a dagger or the shiv. Yeah, yep. you could wield the shiv and a dagger at the same time, but you couldn't wield it with the rapier. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to get a feat for that. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. I'm gonna have to attune to both of them, but you know, that might be something. Yeah. That would take up two of your attunement slots. Let me add those. 
Oh, the cactus pauldron does not. <laughs> the cactus pauldron does not require attunement, so you've only used up two of your three attunement slots to use these weapons. I think these are probably the weapons I'm going to be using for the rest of the command. Hmm. Potentially. <laughs> uh, Gior, was there anything you wanted to buy here? So, what's in the funds? Because I can't really look at the funds right now because I still have character mancer up. Oh, he was uh, leveling up. Oh. oh. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what I wanted. But, um, I, I wish, I wish I could get the Boots of Haste. <laughs> Unfortunately, you need 2,500 for that. Yeah. Oh, poor, poor Yorb and his short legs. Um, his short, stubby legs. Well, Boots of Haste, uh, are correctly, only give you speed, like, a certain number of times a day, or is that a, or is five different? Yeah. Uh, uh, boots of haze. I guess I. Uh, here we go. I guess I don't. I don't get anything. By the way, I'm the. I'm in the care right now because I'm headed to something, but I'm still on the session while in the car. Okay. Uh, just, just a notification. Uh, boots of haste. While you wear these boots, you can click your heels together to cast a haste spell on yourself as a bonus action. You don't suffer from lethargy when the spell ends when cast using these boots. Once this property is used, it can't be used again until the next dawn. So for one combat, you'd be able to move at double your speed, get an extra attack, and have, like, plus two AC. Basically, yeah. yeah. I would have to uh, ask Starling for a little uh, extra gold. Apparently she doesn't give gold to people who need it for items. Val and Darling back at the end. What are you two doing? <laughs> Want to play a card game? Really? Just waiting? No. No. Uh, Darling? Darling's already left town with the card and her money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. well, I suggest a card game is what we're doing. And okay. We're uh, just chilling. Okay, Darling and Val are just playing a card game at the end while the men are buying stuff. <laughs> Let them have their nothing. It's okay. <laughs> we are shopping. <laughs> uh, whiskey. Uh, then let's cut. Let's cut over to whiskers. Um, the so whiskers approaches the shop. <laughs> okay, you p approach the shop. The weird, the weird animal-like person you see, which you can't really determine what animal he is. He is some type of animal. As he looks over to you. Oi, welcome back. Oi, welcome back. How can I help you? Well, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Um, mm -hmm. I really want that ring you have. He points mm -hmm. at the third ring. But I only have this much money. And he pulls out 2,300 and... Let me get the exact number off my hair sheet. 2,330 gold pieces. Okay. I know I'm short by a lot. But yes, you are. <laughs> stop all the cactus people from attacking the city and kill hags that were giving the nightmares. Does that count for any sort of discount? I'd pay Make... I don't know when the next time I'll be back in town, but I'd, I'd really do want those items. <laughs> Make me a persuasion check at advantage. <sighs> Doesn't matter with the way I've been rolling today. Um, okay. Uh, da -da -da. Is there a button I press for advantage? How do I do that? Well, if worst case scenario, I'll just press the place. Uh, persuasion. Add a 15. He looks you up and down. <sighs> I had heard some unlikely heroes had save us, and from the looks of it, you might be one of them. Hmm. 
He looks down at the gold. He looks to the ring. He looks to you. <laughs> uh, I will take all of your gold for the ring. On one condition. Okay. You, sp you must you must advertise my shop wherever you go. Okay. Um, what is the name of your shop? Do you have a logo? Do you have something I can put on my clothing? Like, I, yes, all the yes. <laughs> <laughs> He, just doing him a huge favor. Risters understands paying back kindness. He he smiles. Hmm. I'm not really a traveling merchant yet, though. If you advertise for me, I might be able to branch out. You may refer to me as Rillitz. I am Rillitz, and my store is. And my story is Rillitz's Odds and Ends. <laughs> As for a logo, hmm, I don't really have much of one. Oh, he snaps his fingers and goes to the back. At, at front, he provides, he provides what seems to be some... If you've seen anything with letters or whatnot, it seems to be one of those things you would stamp into the wax and make a seal. Ah. I suppose the best I can offer as a logo would probably be my seal of notification. Uh, hmm. He looks over your armor. Is there any particular spot you would not mind it being stamped on? Um... He effectively just like spreads his hands up and looks up and just like waits for him to stamp wherever he got him wants. Okay. Uh, uh, he'll stamp on. He'll stamp right on. He'll stamp right in the center of your chest. See, it being that that is the that will probably be the location that is seen the most. <laughs> okay. Um. I was going to say, Wister's going to go buy a cape and have this a larger version of this put on it, but he has no money, so... <laughs> <laughs> you have gate... You have, congratulations, Whiskers. You have received this ring and have used all of your money. All it cost was one sponsorship and all my money. <laughs> exactly. Congratulations. You have sold your soul to... You have sold your soul to corporations. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I sold it to Rillard. So, DM, I have a question for you. I might have an answer. Uh, the boots of haste, would those be half off or is it only weapons? Uh, only weapons for... Only weapons for, uh, currently, uh, your... Ah, uh, that sucks. Oh, so you would have given him money for the boots of haste? Yeah, because I could use them too. <laughs> no, you require a human, I'm pretty sure. You can't just, like... Darling, hours. I will also point out to the player of Darling, you're about to potentially leave. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Okay, um, well, Darling will head down to go fetch the carriages. They okay. Okay, uh, you would head down to the southeast. You'd find a modest building uh, in front. You'd see a very gothic looking a very gothic looking carriage. In front of it would be two camels. As you approach, uh, the uh, a female would approach you. Ah Ah, you must be the one that you must be the one that har referred to me referred re referred. Yeah, you do definitely fit the description you gave. <laughs> Where is she? Uh, she is in the. Uh, this is more theater of the mind. Uh, it would be in the south. It would be in the southeastern part of town that you would find this cart and person. About where I am now, right? Yeah. Oh. Well, no. My bad. Southwestern. <laughs> oh, then then she's right in the right place. Yeah. No wait, no, South No, I was right the first time. It is Southeastern. You confused me. <laughs> right here. That is West. <laughs> right here. 
Yes. Like yeah, that's more like it. Yes. Uh, as you go there, you meet this woman. Uh, she seems to be a. Surprising enough, she looks human. Uh, she she stands in front of she stands in front of this gothic-looking carriage with the two camels at front. Well, uh, here, well, here's your cart. Uh, Harb Harb told me all the specifications, paid for everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, the camels, the camels, thankfully don't need to be fed, don't do need to be fed often, but uh, as far as water goes, you they're pretty good on that for a bit. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, there should be feed for the camels. You should be able to care for these camels for eh, probably a month at least. Uh, oh, Har already paid for everything, Han. So it doesn't ma So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Oop. <laughs> Of course, and as you, if you'll excuse me, I have a call coming in. She says as she walks off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have acquired your cart. Whiskers. Okay. Uh. Actually, as you were about to leave the inn, darling. The bartender would have stopped you. Okay. Ah, uh, Miss Darling, I have a letter for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Take the letter. Eh? Right. He provides you a letter. Do you read said letter? <laughs> uh, yes, she will read the said letter. Uh, I, as you open it up, you see. You see on the back, the stamp, you immediately recognize the stamp, darling. It is the stamp of Lord Count Drake. Okay, uh, she kind of walks to a private corner and reads the letter. Uh, you open it up and start and begin to read. My dear darling Da, I write to you today to... I know you are busy dealing with this shadow organization nonsense, shadow organization business. However, you, I am, I am in need of your services in the capital. Make sure, come, come by post haste at your earliest convenience. <laughs> in lovingly, Lord Count Drake. <laughs> And and then uh, and then you get all of the and then you get the rest of your party at the market. Uh, if no one has anything else to do in the market, uh, Akari, you have bought a dagger and a rapier for yourself. Uh, Whiskers, you are now you are now a walking advertisement. <laughs> You're now a walking advertisement with your ring. <laughs> I agree, and it is perfectly fine. Give me the bling. <laughs> yes, you get the ring. As for that, uh, okay, party. Uh, with your cards in hand, uh, a book uh, giving you info on said grotto. Out of curiosity, did anyone actually open and read the book? <laughs> um, literally, darling, had it the entire time. <laughs> Uh, Darling's reading it on the way to the capital. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> above board, Floof, I am under the understanding that for a few weeks you're going to be a bit preoccupied with stuff. All those things have changed. Yep. That letter to you from... <laughs> that letter to you from Lord Count Drake was... Essentially, a sort of like your your way of being distracted, taking care of things while the party did other stuff, if you so choose. Oh, now, okay. granted, now, okay. uh, 
So if you would be like, okay, guys, uh, she'll be like, she'll be like, let's, uh, cause I still got one more. Yeah, I'm gonna be gone for about a month. That is true. And yeah. She goes, she goes, uh, let's stop by the capital. I need drop down. Can't read the book. Okay, Whiskers tries to read the book upside down. <laughs> uh, Whiskers, you as you hold it upside down, you can Whiskers read. <laughs> um, he is a barbarian, so probably not. He he could probably read it. Is it written in Druidic? It is written in Common. <laughs> probably not. He can speak it. He probably can't read it. <laughs> Uh, this is a bunch of random words thrown together. Um, he hands it to the next person, Gjorb. Uh, Gjorb, you have been ha Gjorb, you have been handed this, uh, journal. <laughs> oh, uh, I believe Gjorb was busy with something at the moment. Uh, hand it to Gjorb someone else. Akari. <laughs> Akari, you... <laughs> Akari, you. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, Akari, you have been handed this journal. Has it been read? Sorry, I was doing my. No, items. no, it has not been. No, it has not been read yet. Uh, Whiskers, you cannot read. Handed it to Gior. Gior was staring off into space. Uh, Akari, it, so the book has been given to you, Akari. Do you read it? Okay, so I open the book. What's the language? Uh, common. So why can't Riskin read it? Because he's uh, an idiot. <laughs> that's the short and long of it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I read it. What does it say? Uh, at first, when you read this, it is the... It seems to be the scribblings of a madman immediately as you start reading this. It starts to read. I was there. I saw it all. The mist. The misty grotto. There's actually a place there. It's so much. So much there. Creatures of all shapes and sizes. Giants that just emit mist from their backs. Cre creatures that hide in the mist. Attack you. Just... A whole village. A whole village that believes everything's okay. That there's nothing outside of the mist. Please, you have to believe me. I'm not crazy. I swear. The song. The music. The song. It then just goes off into random ramblings of of a song that you do not understand. <laughs> so the gist of how getting it is that there's a song curse there's a village inside the mist and it's being in there and there's a song that's playing that makes people believe that there's nothing outside the mist oh so a magical village in the mist oh cool let's go is that what i'm getting at uh, is that basically... that's it uh that if that is what your character would come to that is what your character would come to So there's clearly, um, what, uh, did you read it aloud or did you read it in your head? Gorb asks if he got the floorboard loot. <laughs> there's no floorboard loot. We do not do those anymore, Gorb. <laughs> I read it again to make sure that I fully understand. Uh, yes, you read it again. Everyone else, now, do you read it out loud for everyone else? <laughs> Yes, let's do that. Yes, everyone, everyone, you now hear know what Agari knows about it. It's essentially, that there are creatures within the mist. Some of them this emitting mist from their backs, and that there's a, a potential village in the mist, where there's a song potentially of some kind. Again, Ooh, these are. <laughs> these seem to be the oh. ramblings of a madman. But so yeah, whether you take the what I'm doing at is that there's a curse that is a vocal curse that needs to be a constant singing to be able to affect these people. No, but so, uh, I recommend being bringing earplugs. 
Oh, what's an earplug? But, um, it's not a thing. We can just, like, go in there. It's not like it's gonna hurt us or anything. Plus, there's people living in there, so it can't be too dangerous. What's an earplug? Earplugs don't exist uh, in this you... world. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's cat people. For cat people, look at my ears. Do you think you can plug them? Plug them. <laughs> yeah, you use cloth. No. Looking at Ekari, looking at his own ears. Yeah, yeah, you just you, you use cloth. <laughs> at least no. it muffles the sound. <laughs> Then how are you going to enjoy the music? I don't think you want to enjoy the music. Artist, <laughs> yeah, I think we, but look, it's not like no one ever survived. This it sounds like it. If you do get, don't come back out. They just live there, so there's no danger in the spot. We can go in there. I believe if we go in there, we would be stuck in there if we hear the song. Hey. Well, what else are we going to do? We have to go there eventually. Akari sighs and rubs his, his face with his paw hand. <laughs> and like, I'm reasoning with a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> I can make my chain mail plus one. I just that. <laughs> I can see why now Darling Dude thinks you're all idiots. <laughs> oh, she's being heard idiots too. <laughs> Says the other person that she believes to be an idiot. <laughs> I'm smarter than idiots. idiots. <laughs> I don't know. I was short three thousand dollars and I still got my ring, but I think I win. Yeah, but now you're a walking Warriors billboard. Warriors by far the smartest of the idiots. <laughs> but I, believe, I do believe that Darlin Dude thinks that everyone's an idiot. So, <laughs> except yeah, for Val. Who cares? <laughs> okay. That's for just Val. because I'm quiet, <laughs> and she hasn't heard me talk much. You don't say anything, so she, you haven't put your foot in your mouth yet. <laughs> Exactly. Hey, my idiotic, my idiotic, my idiotic nature is is only seen by other idiots. Okay. I have enough wisdom to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> hey, the only idiotic thing I did was follow Whiskers into a temple because I wanted a little bit more knowledge. Okay, that's not my fault. Oh, you want to curse me? No. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This curse meat will come into will come into place at some point. Thanks, Whiskers. Oh, no, nah, I've had enough fun with the curse meat. I'm just gonna eat it. Wait, do you just eat the curse meat? Yeah, he just eats the curse meat. Uh, <laughs> I have a ring now. It'll protect me. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. Uh, darling, will uh, we'll make sure everybody loads up to the ca carriage and head towards the capital. Uh, Is you're heading. Or... <laughs> he eats the meat. <laughs> well, first, first whiskers. If you're eating the meat, hold on, hold on. As I need the. I have to make. <laughs> uh, oh, oh no! <laughs> I didn't think you would actually eat it. <laughs> I think Whiskers what? is gonna die! What did you think I was gonna do with it? <laughs> I thought you were gonna feed it to something! I don't know! <laughs> I did! Myself! <laughs> okay, okay. Oh no! Surprisingly, <laughs> funnily enough, <laughs> funnily enough, uh, this might benefit you. I'm gonna need you to roll oh. me a- I'm gonna need you to roll me a d100. <laughs> oh god. We all drank selling whiskers so this thing could be potentially harmful. Well, see, whiskers knew it was cursed. Yeah, the word cursed means it's dangerous. I'm gonna need that D100, whiskers. Oh, no, oh, uh, whiskers misunderstood it. Um, he thought he, he was saying cured all along. 
know how to cure meat? Oh. A 14. Okay. Uh, I, I, I hope that's good. This DM told me that low numbers were the weirder thing. That's a different DM. Okay. Uh, you all watch as Whiskers, as you eat this, you immediately feel off. As everyone, you all see as Whiskers, his skin starts to become translucent. And his eyes go from their cat-like gold to a milky white. Uh, congratulations. Your skin is now translucent and your eyes are a milky white. Okay, that's it. That's fine. So does that, that, that mean does that mean does that mean he's we can see his organs? Yep. You uh, now see cool. you whiskers. You are now a walking. You have disadvantage on any charisma base checks. <laughs> ah, I didn't have. I didn't roll those well, anyways. I rolled like a maximum of five. I'm gonna try to fix that. Uh. No. <laughs> you have to spell can curse? Can... <laughs> curse, I can good. curse. And I can try to do some healing. Uh, this yeah, would the new curse actually fix that? Depends on the DM. You would have to take you would have to try. <laughs> I I will cast it if you're okay with me removing that. <laughs> yeah. Are you talking to the DM or whiskers? <laughs> whiskers, <laughs> I think. You okay. are. Like, uh, uh, it doesn't hurt. He pokes it. Does his finger I cast finger? Remove Curse. Okay. Oh, third level. Uh, as you cast Remove Curse, you think, oh, this is a simple Pharaoh's Curse. This should be able to be broken. As you do, Whiskers, you do not feel different, and the rest of the party, he still looks translucent with those milky white eyes. I have cool. another idea. Oh. It's a little extreme, but I think it'll work. I try to fly. So, you. All you we need to do is kill Whiskers and then revive them, and that should maybe be something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there's, a, there's a full on reset. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, turning things off and on again fixes things, right? So, like, we'll just murder Whiskers and then I'll revive them, and it'll be fine. Um, when are you going to tell the party that it cost you like 300 gold pieces worth of diamonds for you to revive someone? I... Did you just implement the scrolls from Polarski? <laughs> well, Revivify is a spell that she could know, but it requires 300 gold pieces worth of diamond, which is consumed in the casting of the spell. Uh, let me, let me check that, because I'm not used <laughs> to having to actually use things for spells. I'm used to just uh, being yeah. able to do them. Most high-level spells require, like, either... An item that's worth money to hold, or an item that you have to consume. Alright, let me see, let me see. Because uh, it's actually... I mean, it also depends on what type of barbarian whiskers is. I am not the type that you want me to be. Oh, hey! Um, so I could use Lesser Restoration, and that should end one disease or one condition afflicting it. You could try. I, I don't think... Remove curse theoretically should have worked, so who knows what this is? I'll try the uh, re lesser restoration next. Because um, I can just do that once per long rest. Uh, um. uh, here's the Okay, Val, I'm gonna be nice. Make me a, rel a religion check. <laughs> okay, before I do the restoration? Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna be nice to you. I sound like you're gonna be uh, Dirty 20. Up. Okay, <laughs> Val. Uh, seeing as a remove curse didn't work, uh, if you're going, if Whiskers at all would have explained what the hell this thing is, you would know that this was a cursed piece of piece of meat from a pharaoh's tomb. Upon eating it, you would you would know that the pharaohs their curses are a bit more stronger than your average curse. You would know that the only ways for Whiskers to no longer be like this would be either through the intervention of a god, or the wish spell. <laughs> oh, damn. So, I am now Ghost Whiskers. Forever. <laughs> You're not a ghost. Uh, Whiskers uh, once again tries to fly. 
<laughs> you jump up in the air and you do not go, and you get a bit off. You jump your standing jump distance and fall back to the ground. <laughs> okay, what if I do it while flapping my arms? <laughs> you. Can you give him some budgeting damage for him being an idiot? <laughs> Uh, funnily enough, whenever he takes damage now, you can all see the damage done to his internal organs. <laughs> oh. Ah, don't worry. Um, also, Whiskers as an experiment is going to turn into an animal and see if he has ghosty skin as an animal. Uh, uh, uh what animal do you turn into? <laughs> uh, we're currently in a wagon, so probably nothing too big. Um, ooh, just to mess with everyone, I turned into a ghost spider. Uh, hmm. You, <laughs> as you turn into a spider, you all now can see the inner workings of a spider. The organs of a spider are now before you. All right. Now I'm thinking about it. He's a he's a scientific he's a scientific marvel. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, would would uh, darling know if there's somebody in town in the capital that can fix this? Uh, the only one who could potentially fix this would potentially be Lord Count Drake. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll she goes, Whiskers, turn back to your human body and cover yourself up with something. And if you don't, I'm hitting you. Then turn back. <laughs> now the real question is, what ha how the quote- This is a good one. <laughs> now the real question is, what happens when he turns into a tree ant? <laughs> Now I'm a ghost tree. You can see my circle. <laughs> you can see how long the tree is. All we can finally see how old he is because we'll see the rings of the tree. Haha! <laughs> At the end. Yes. Uh, Darling starts driving our cart with camels towards the capital. Oh, I assumed this was happening while we were traveling, but yeah, of course, too. Okay. Uh, on a cart, you can move a total of eight squares. Every four squares, there's a random encounter. Oh, what's the price of a chain plus one? Hey, oh, uh, Final. one. Uh, we can reach all the way there in one less than one day, guys. Yeah, but we have to make a random encounter before we get there. I'm pretty sure. But the but the chain mail, yeah. I can apply that. We oh, can yeah, perfectly go to the spirit station it, or ease bend. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you're traveling along, uh, despite the fact that you left Lycan City in the morning, in roughly the morning, uh, for as you were traveling, there just became pitch blackness after a certain while. You are now you are now under the hollows thing, which is, darling, you would know this as a constant spell that. A constant spell over the area that Lord Count Drake has made. Essentially, it's an eternal darkness within a certain radius of Eve's Bend. So, does that mean that since it's basically a spell that we can't use night vision to see? Uh, no, no, it still works with dark vision and stuff. Yeah, no, I it's. Have, it, uh, I have, I have Google Sight, so I can see. Well, no. Here's the thing. Have, Any of you? Fight, so I can't see. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> if you let me continue, <laughs> no, the no. darkness does not. The darkness is count does not count as magical darkness. In that sense, it's not the darkness spell. It's a special type of spell that Lord Count Drake made to basically block the sun for him and his vampire brethren. <laughs> So I would think the, cur the name of the spell would be better if it's Internal Night. I mean, <laughs> you'd have to ask him what the name of the spell is. <laughs> it does have a name. <laughs> and you can potentially learn this if you decided... But it is a very powerful spell. I should just warn you now. Oh, uh, mate, the day turned into night. <laughs> uh, traveling... <laughs> Uh, traveling along, you, uh, as you're traveling along, you see off in the distance uh, various 
You see various snakes and some giant spiders off in the distance. Uh, they seem to be paying you guys no mind, though. So what's our encounter? Various snakes and spiders off in the distance. <laughs> That's our encounter? <laughs> if You may choose if you want to, go after them, but <laughs> they don't seem to be aggressive towards you in any sense. What's you just snake me? Akari, the meat collector. You want some fish <laughs> meat? I think I didn't eat it all. No! Uh, well, I don't Darling know. Darling will look back at... Darling will look at everybody and, go, and it, like... Very... Like, almost turning to her form of dread. She'll look back and she'll go, Don't do anything without my permission. Don't touch anything. Don't say anything or I will kill you. And she turns back and keeps on going. So I wonder I, if we go back to that tomb and I eat more of the meat, I'll turn more ghosty. So, I, I do have a question, like an out-of-character question. Yes. About the cursed meat. So, mm -hmm. since it turns whisker skin transparent, but what if somebody that had fur eat it? Would, uh, I'm a cat person, I already have fur. So, would that mean that you technically don't see his transparent skin? I'm pretty sure the fur also gets transparent. <sighs> Uh, yes. So if it's just the skin that turns transparent, you wouldn't see organs because you would see muscles first. Uh, That's true. true. You would see muscles. Are organs. Yeah. Well. It'd still be a whole. You would see. The, you would. You would see. You would see a bit of bones and some of his muscle underneath his. Yeah. Yeah. You would essentially see that. Uh, essentially, if any of you have seen Attack on Titan, the Colossal Titan. That's yeah. essentially what you see when you look at him. <laughs> I really want to know if he eats all of it, what would happen. I think I did. You I ate all saying, of it. I was joking about there being any left. Now, no, to go back to the tomb and I eat the rest of the meat there. Oh. Uh, you want to be a freak? You want to be a freak of nature? This is how you become a freak of nature. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was already. I already shifted to six different types of creatures. Now I'm a ghost half the time. It's all good. You're not a ghost, you're just... You're, you're just see-through. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> like a ghost. No! Okay. Uh, your next four plate... Your ne next four spaces. Which would be the rabbit at Eve's Bend. Yes. You would arrive at Eve's Bend. Pulling up into... <laughs> pulling, pulling up into this large city this large city as you see various gothic itinerary much jack-o-lanterns seem to be going up and down the streets you you see off in the distance connected to the large fountain in the back a large ominous looking castle which which darling you would recognize speci specifically as lord count drake's home <laughs> Pulling up in, yep, that's right where everybody. <laughs> pulling up in, he would start heading towards the castle, and that is where we'll end our session for tonight. As you are now, to be honest, I didn't think you guys would come here. I thought you guys were going to go to the Misty Grotto. <laughs> I'm Don't still working. Uh, to be honest, darling, darling. To be honest Darling just dropping herself off and fixing, uh, fixing, uh, whiskers, and that's it. And that's not gonna happen. Well, alright, so, here, here's, here, well, okay, here is what I had thought of. I was thinking, oh, you would have gotten that letter, and Darling could have gone off on her own to go to the capital. Meanwhile, the rest of the party would just head towards the Missy Grotto. That's what I thought you guys were going to do. But I was clearly mistaken. <laughs> so we're just at Eve's Bend to fix Whisker's infliction, and then we're going to go to Misty Grotto. Is that it? Here's the thing, yeah, guys. She's Most people guys don't sleep with cast her. type level spells would require equivalent compensation for it. I don't think we got that. Uh, fun facts, guys. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Yeah, no, the only reason why she brought them to Eve's Bend was to fix Whiskers. She was gonna I go think Whiskers is going to learn. Whiskers was an idiot. 
I think Whiskers is going to learn Darling's secret. And they completely forget about it. <laughs> Hello, he has an eight intelligence. He's very smart. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> that is where that is where we'll end our session for tonight. And tomorrow, and and next time, well, I think we'll just start off with with Darling taking her exit from the party since the player herself needs to be gone for like a month apparently. <laughs> we could do the drop off thing. Uh, does that mean I could potentially use? What? My icon. <laughs> uh, what? Words. My icon for the traveling. <laughs> I mean, oh, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. If no one, if no one objects, you can be the one driving the cars. <laughs> also, why did you suddenly get like a ghost version of yourself? It's not. It's just. It's, it's just a cyan glow. Oh, okay. We, just think of his eyes glowing cyan. Icon. And yeah, with. Just, and, and, and was it? Just to let everybody know, she is giving the. To, uh, Money to the smartest character in the party, me. Uh, she hmm? is transferring it to Val. For okay. To Val is our banker for now. <laughs> Val, you now have an extra 2,500 gold on you. But you may send however you wish. No. <laughs> no. I'd like to find out the responsible one is leaving and the rest of the party is now these chuckle fucks. <laughs> Hey, excuse me, which one of us is a ghost? You're not a None. ghost! None. None of you are a ghost. I haven't left. I'm still here. Val, would you... Chaos. Val, would you be responsible? Are you really the responsible one of this party? I can be responsible. Have you seen the actions of the rest of the party? She is the responsible one by default. <laughs> but not, just because she's silent does not mean she's responsible. <laughs> that just means she's not getting involved. To be honest, the only, when it comes to money, I only spend my own money, and when I use the money, it is for survivability utmost. I yeah, do, uh, and, I, and I got a ring. Hey, Panda. Uh, Darling Switching uh, is giving you the emergency fund pouch. Which is two thousand five hundred and fifty gold. Okay. Wait, I shut. I put that down my shirt, uh, next to my boobs, so nobody can grab it, and it's. Okay. I will only use it. Only use it. So uh, yeah, if somebody tries to rope me to grab this spare money, they will be being punched. <laughs> and then I will try and inflict wounds until it works. But it'll never work. Ah, but yeah. you can't touch my skin because it's a ghost. Um, Your skin is still there! Yeah. Uh, we only went to East Bend to fix whiskers. <laughs> See, you all along. okay. Uh, I will say, above board, Lord Count Drake will not be able to fix this. <laughs> well, she's gonna try. <laughs> yeah. I could see it at the same where we do a small thing of trying at the beginning of the session. And then him kicking us out. I, I, I feel like we would have to go back to the tomb to figure out what this curse is about. I don't know, guys. I just have to defeat God. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, if any of you still need to level up, uh, you can do that now if you so choose. <laughs> Ren, I you can do your. You Ren, you doing? can. Ren, you can do your level up whenever. Uh, I know you're bit. Yeah, I know you were taken away for do to do something right now. So, no worries there. Sorry, uh, did you get another level of road? Price check on the chainmail plus one. Oh, you never got the plus one chair. You can, he does not upgrade a chair to plus one. No chainmail. Oh, chainmail. Yeah. Oh. Oh, chainmail. Uh, hold on. Uh, he didn't talk loud enough. He couldn't hear him. So he messaged in the chat, too. Oh, I thought it said chair. My bad. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to hear him, so understandably. Well, no. Yeah. Uh, so... I, I was curious what the cursed meat would do, but I guess it, I didn't roll high enough for the benefit, I guess, but I, I still like having ghost skin. Uh, Just to let you all aware, 
We're going to that little tomb air, that little tomb thing first, because <laughs> it's on the way anyway. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'll I'll tomb I'll thing. make uh, on the way to where? Oh, you mean this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 